Hey, you guys. I am so sorry I was late. Hello, 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 Eric. Hi, Satan. Hello, Dot. Okay, I missed it. Do you guys know how far back I need to go? Apparently, Ollie bit now again. Right before I paused, though, she seemed wasted, like drunk, drunk. I know she's always drinking, but um, it's what happens. Like Dot said, if you mistreat an animal, that's what happens. I know she wanted to hit that dog for breaking her phone. I know. I know. She probably would have. She probably would have. Okay, I'm going to press play, but I'm not sure if you guys know how far back it is. Or if we even need to see it, if most of you guys saw it, we can just continue. And stuff, but it's fine. I just want my man. She just wants her man. I don't ask for much in life. No, Ollie bit her, Mandalore. I guess she was messing with him. Oh, like that Aussie, what does he say? I don't know who Stanley is. Who's Something Stanley? He doesn't want much. He doesn't ask much or whatever he... Like, that's just me. I don't want much in life. I just want my Joshi. Oh, jeez. Hey, everybody coming in. Hey, Matthew. Woof, woof. So, I'll leave it now. I did to drink too much tonight. It's just now finally hitting me. And hey, Aaron. I'm just, like, ready to go to bed right now. Hey, anonymity. I don't want all of this other stupid bullshit. He wants to clap my cheeks? Tell him to get in line. Take a number. I misread the title. It's okay. Like, I was fine earlier, but then, you know, it's like it's final form finally hits you, and I feel like shit. Hey, Pink. Just, Matthew. I don't want to feel like shit. Hey, DM. I guess she's been drinking. Ollie bit her. That's all I really know. If you hold on, I'll go back a little bit. Who smiles? But that's pretty much what she's been doing taking shots. More shots. I can't stay very long because the music. But I'm just... saying about me. So. Yeah. So she's had an eventful and... night. She's making zero attempts. Yeah, she doesn't want to change. Oh my gosh. Hold on, you guys. I'm so sorry. Shut up. You don't fucking miss Joshy. Because he's not your man, so. Okay, I'm back. Hey, Gary. I heard Mesca's eating bugs. <laughs> That's I love going his on. fucking hairy chest. It's goddamn... Did you guys know that? <sighs> hey, you. It's Marty calling. I wish. Seriously, I'm not even a big fan of chest hair. I mean, I don't hate it, but just a lot of guys can't pull it off. Like, Joshy just... She's about to puke. <laughs> Joshy just got it going on in all the fucking ways. And... Ow. Hey, Penny. I just dropped my phone on my face. Like, the first... I'm not even talking about when I first saw Josh on Kiwi Farm. In the first video I clicked on Josh. Oh, my god! Like, oh, my God. This guy is so fucking adorable. Watching Cobes flirting? With who? Oh, 9K celebration. Very cool. Oh, my nose is running. I need tissue and I need to go to bed, too. Okay, I'm just trying to be nice. I don't care if she has 9K, but I understand people like her. So yay for her. Keep kids out of your mouth. I don't like when I have like delayed reactions to alcohol. Like I should feel fine right now. Thank you, Julius. <laughs> what kind of bugs? I get it, Brandy. Same, but he pulls it off in looks like he he has a fucking hot ass body and his uh -huh. fucking chest hair well not even chest his whole body hair is fucking hot all over yeah like, i was twirling his chest hair last night all six inches of it <laughs> they don't mix alcohol and her need to break up She's eating Cajun trail mix with bugs. 
and when I say he pulls off chest hair, yeah, because there's some guys that are hairy and gross and stuff, but you look at Joshy, it's just mm, hot all the fuck over, bitch. You don't have to tell Joshy me. has got it going on in every fucking <laughs> aspect. He looks <laughs> heart, mind, body, and soul. Whether you he says it? he has a soul or not, whatever. Like he knows what I mean, right, Gary? Hey, Blondie. He's got it going on in all the fucking ways. I miss, I miss my man. Blondie, I'm not gonna elaborate, but I just need to make sure. Did you email me? I just want to make sure that was you. But hello, beautiful, and it's really good to see you. I'm going to go to bed. I need to go to bed. Don't go to bed. I just got here. <laughs> what is he up to? I don't know. I wish he would call me. Brandy, I think she is. Hey, Bino. <sighs> yes. She misses her man. I don't think I got that. Does she miss her man? I got to go to bed, though, for real. Go back 33 minutes. Okay, 33. We'll go to 35 minutes. Wait, did I go too far? Hold on, it's about... I have to mute it really fast because... Ooh, I just muted you. Stop turning back on. Is it around this? Is the cat? Yeah, I guess Ollie bit her. She's been missing her man all night. I had to block Nal on Facebook because she randomly found my account and reshared. What, Mandalore? She did? All right, Eric, can you tell me if it's like around this spot? I don't know. I had to, I can't believe she shared your picture. Is this the cat bite? I, I don't know. I really don't. But she needs to leave Ollie alone. I mean, clearly, he's not having it. It is doxing. Lock your account down. You don't have to mute. She's playing Cobras. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. All right, I guess... On a nightly basis, so... And Eric, was it around here? Oh, because men are nasty and they love the youngest they can get away with. So what the hell? What men do you know? Like, oh my god. Go back exactly there. Okay, if you think I could go back exactly, let's see. Thirty-three. Well, we're at thirty-four minutes. Miss. Don't ask me what year, but I learned how to blow smoke rings on one Christmas morning. Yes, they did. Damn it, no. Nobody should, man, all but it's now. Can you not just, like, remove their comments? Can you just delete these motherfuckers, like, straight up? Unfortunately, for some reason, I don't know, maybe you have friends in common, but you could lock down your friends list and I would do that and I would set your account to private. You need to lock it down. I'm really sorry that happened. It is creepy. That's so weird. She's oh weird. my god, you sound fucking mental. Please. Oh, here we go. Is this it? Yeah, you sniper no sniping. Yeah, you give me a kiss. You give me a kiss so fast. Quiet. I'm taking it. That wasn't it. Don't you dare. Did he bite you before that? Don't you? Yeah, you sniper no sniper. Give me a kiss. She's blowing at him again. Starfish season. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. 
Give me a kiss. Hey, don't look up at the sky. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. I have to go back 37 Ooh, minutes? You yeah, you sniper, no sniping. Yeah, you give me a kiss. You give me a kiss so fast. Quiet. Don't you dare. Wow. All he heard about now is it just... Don't you dare. I'm going back a little bit. I was distracted for a second. Yeah, you sniper. No. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, you sniper. No sniping. Yeah, you give me a kiss. You give me a kiss so fast. The kiss of death. He just doesn't like her. You just need to leave him alone. Don't you dare. You are a terrible cat owner. I hope you know that. You do not deserve a cat. She's jamming Josh is a beat evil circus music. Did she really go to bed? Fuck up cats to have no and you used to be a mod? Oh yeah, you used to be a mod, but cats have no soul. Okay. Ollie is a true hero. <laughs> oh my gosh, free Ollie. Can you get a freestyle if I was in the mood for it? If I was in the mood for it. If I was in the mood for a freestyle, I could. Is this I, did, I did a little freestyle at Josh's. I was like, God, that's amazing. And then I forgot it immediately. I'm like. Oh, sure. my gosh. Sure. How are you, beautiful? Hello, everybody coming in. The cat, no, she's a bad cat owner. First of all, she was blowing on him again, and animals don't really appreciate that. So good to see you too. Doing well, getting more pregnant by the hour. How far along are you? Yeah, back to a same person. Don't ask. I was just at Nels, and then JM, I can't, I just can't with bitches like them. <laughs> I know it's a lot. You want to know if someone is a good person or not, see how their animals react to them. That's true. That's true. She totally could, but you know, she's not lesbian enough to be accepted. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she's drunk again. Yes, she's always drunk. So what we can do, you guys, we can hang out and watch a little bit of this stream or we can go to Twitter, see what people are talking about foodie. I don't know. I have time tonight, so I could just hang out and chill. I'm cool with whatever you guys want to do. We can even check out her live stream. No freestyling unless you queef. <laughs> oh my gosh. Even her chat said, I think she's fallen or has fallen to sleep. Four months left. Congratulations. I am so happy for you. We're here for you, Breezy. I don't know. I just want to chit chat. I don't know that like I'm super invested in like Nal right now. She's drunk again. I don't know if I really want to see Pooty eat, but I, I'm just here to hang out. <laughs> Beautiful. Right, I don't think I'm supposed to even be playing this. <laughs> yeah, now talked about. Hold on. Now talked to. Hold on. Actually, I'll just mute her while the music plays and we could watch her be weird. Um, now talked about needing a new phone and how much she loved Josh and how everyone should buy her stuff. I don't think anybody should send her anything. Not even a pad. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> She's just the most ungrateful person, and she's one of those people that will use you and take, 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 and then screw you over. She is so out oversaturating her own audience, even. Everyone's kind of getting bored on the 12 hour streams. The juice has lost its squeeze. It's just like I'm still here. I'm still invested. I find it entertaining, but like, I'm not that invested right now. Like, <laughs> I'm watching the new scary movies they put on Tubi and watching this melted stretch Armstrong dance around and beg her viewers for money and favors. Oh my gosh. And when are you and Satan going to pop out some little hell spawns? <gasps> the world better watch out if that happens. Do the fish net. Jason, how the hell are you? Send Queef Cobra cat food. Um, no, I kind of want to send her a muzzle though. 
She needs a phone, but just got another bottle to drink because she doesn't have a phone. Yeah, make that make sense. Oh, and she finished it all. <laughs> Is now Queen Cobra. Yeah, she used to go by Naked and Laughing um, when she was still kind of in Goral World. I guess she still kind of is. But um, then when she got with Josh, she, of course, had to ride his coattails and she became Queen Cobra because she has no identity of her own. And apparently nobody cared enough about Naked and Laughing. Someone told her they had an iPhone 4 they can give her, but she never answered that person. Oh, she probably wanted like an iPhone 13 or a newer model. The channel got banned that too. She's ban evading, but she still could have changed. She didn't have to go by Queen Cobra. Satan and I like to practice. We practice a lot. I know. I know you do. Tied up with work. Things happen fast around me. All right. I think. Hold on one second. I think. But I'm not thinking too hard. I don't know. I guess let's go check out Foodie's live stream for a bit. I think we could go do that. I know she changed her name to that after they'd only met. And it's weird. Like, it's weird. I think Courtney even brought that up, too. Like, it's just weird to ride his coattails. And she keeps saying, like, oh, I'm not, I don't want anything from him. I don't want this. I don't want that. Well, of course, she wants food. But, like, you kind of are trying to take the Cobra identity. It's odd. Jason, that's how my life is. She made the Queen Cobra channel before her and Josh were even talking. Really? I thought she changed it. But, see, Gary knows up. Gary knows more than I do. Kevin, that's right. Shauna, she can't appreciate crap. She keeps talking about his money. I don't know. Maybe. I remember when they first started dating, everybody was saying that she was truly just like trolling him. Like not everybody, but I had seen enough that she was trolling him and she was just interested in money, views, blah, blah, blah. She was going to take what she could get basically. But I kind of wonder if somewhere along the way she did develop feelings. Um, she's probably always been obsessed, but. She seems like she wants to wear his skin at this point. <laughs> you are never fully ready, but once they are here, children are the best and parenting comes naturally. It's amazing being a parent. You just never get to sleep again. Or like if you do sleep, it's still not good sleep. But, um, you know, I look at it this way. I slept a lot before I was a parent. I slept a lot. I slept enough for everybody. So I guess, you know, it's all good. <laughs> Josh thought she was a troll originally. Her eyes scare me. You can't love someone only after talking to them for a few months. I mean, the way she loves him? No, it's weird. It's weird. It's very weird. You can have strong feelings. You can, I don't know. I believe there are soulmates out there and people can meet and fall in love fast, but I don't believe she truly loves him because if you're in love, why would you want to torture that person or abuse them or make them miserable? Rx, thank you so much for the super chat. You sleep even less as you become older. That's true too. The Clint interview is a good follow-up to the documentary. You get some odd insight on growing up Josh and Clint struggles. Okay, I think I had saved that to my watch later. Do you guys want to watch a documentary? We can do that. I'm not really like that excited to watch Foodie Eat right now either. I just know I want to hang out with you guys. <laughs> Let me see if I can pull it up on my watch later. I think I had it up or at least saved it. Wait, there's King Cobra's letter from the White House. Gothic D part one. Shoot. Empire of a Dirt. Did I not save that one? Hmm. Let me see. Dot, I agree she wants everything but her parents' house. She is a person who will suck your energy from you, make you feel like crap the way she feels. What's Cyrax doing? I don't know. Staying away from me, hopefully. <laughs> that man scares me. <laughs> the better doc is from Bite Size Cobra Videos. Gary said you'll send it. It's six parts. I just know it's uh, the interview with Clint. Nal and Josh don't know what love really is. No, it's just she can say she loves him all she wants. But um, I don't know. You can't convince me that that's love. You can't convince me 
being this insane as love. You can't convince me if you're in love with somebody that you'd want to abuse them or threaten them with an $8 machete. What isn't Cyrox doing? Brushing his teeth. I know that. Oh my God. <laughs> she isn't brushing his tongue. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see what Gary said. One second. Hold on. I'm trying to get there. All right. I think I might have it. Thank you. All right. Shoot. All right. Give me one second, you guys. <laughs> All right. Well, until I pull it up, hold on. You can watch now, drink, and be weird. Bite Size has a great series, but it's long and yeah, seven parts. I mean, if we can get it all in the same video, I'd much rather do that. <laughs> Imagine getting your boyfriend evicted, right? And didn't somebody say it was like on his birthday? After only a couple, it's weird. If you love somebody, wouldn't you want them to like have stability and a house and a roof over their head? Um, wait, does Josh say I love you to Jessica because I have never heard him say it back? I am not the one to ask because if he said it, I have definitely missed it. But I do know that we have people in this chat who would know that for a fact. All right. I'm on my way to the dock. I'm on my way. It's just going to take a minute because I'm on the dinosaur laptop. <laughs> Respectful goth picnic. Oh, a new song came out too. I forgot about that. We'll have to play that later. Oh, shoot. Where did I go? Okay. I love how I click everything but what I'm supposed to click. Um, shit. Hold on, you guys. Why is it not? Okay. The Clint... I'm not watching the chat right now. The Clinton Saunders interview. I don't know why it didn't come up on my laptop. <laughs> I found it! Well, actually, Gary sent it to me, but for some reason it wouldn't come up, so I had to type it in. <laughs> All right, you guys, get comfy. Get comfy. We are going to watch this doc. And I'm kind of excited because I really liked this guy's style. It's from your favorite son. I have heard her say I love you to Josh. But he doesn't say, oh, he says nothing back or says that's nice of you. Smart man. Don't tell a woman like that you love them because she will never get rid of her. Okay. All right, I think this is it, you guys. So this is Josh's um, dad. Okay. Do we want to wait? Why is it so low, though? Hey, Josh. There we go. Nice. You say I'm taking a shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, Josh, my what are you doing, man? Hope cool. you feel better. I was taking on, a shit. I had to drop a little troll out of my ass for okay. First things first, uh, why don't you just um, introduce yourself so people know who you are? Uh, my name is Clint Saunders. I'm Josh's dad. He's kind of a dick. Not my choice. <laughs> yeah, sorry, man. You didn't have any choice on that one. Clint is Josh's first troll. You know what? What motivated you to want to do this interview, and um, what do you hope to get out of it? Well, it's I get hit up uh, for interviews like this constantly, mm -hmm. um, and it's something I've always ignored because I don't, you know, the YouTube thing's Josh's thing. And it's his world and it's his, it's his thing. You know, I don't want to be a part of that. Um, I don't want to do anything that's going to take away from what he's doing or take, a, you know, try to inf infiltrate into his gig, if that makes sense. I don't know what I thought his dad was going to look like, but it wasn't that. Is anybody else seeing him for the first time too? He does No, Josh doesn't look happy. Clint sucks. Blue, I'm... Aaron, he's showing. Clint is the reason Josh is the way he is for the most part because he was way too hard on him as a kid. He pushes Josh off society and goes on trips all the time. He's a religious fanatic and drove Josh towards Satan. 
He doesn't like that Josh mentions the devil so often. Wow. His dad is cute. I mean, yeah, I didn't expect him to look like this. I guess I thought I was going to see, like, another King Cobra, just older. <laughs> um, and plus, I just don't trust anybody in the Cobraverse. Um, years ago, I would let people in, and and they would just burn me. You know, I'd, I'd let them in, and I'd, I'd talk to them, and I'd, I'd reveal stuff I shouldn't have because I thought they were legit. And, you know, I, I get 40 emails a day. I'm not a troll. <laughs> Whatever, man and you know they all say it and uh and they all just fuck us over always it's i'm 100 percent record now I'm, I'm a bad track record for reading people apparently um and so when you emailed me uh, josh had contacted me so i years ago i quit reading any type of email or text i get from anybody the second i see your son <laughs> cobra uh, or you know youtube i just delete it because i don't I just, oh my God, I don't have time to read that shit. Um, and because I was just inundated with it. And plus, I don't care um, what these people's opinions are. <laughs> they don't know us. Um, they don't know me. They really don't know Josh. They think they do. Um, and, but he told me you were cool. Uh, so when you sent me an email, I looked for it and read it. And I was still very skeptical, of course. There's no way in hell I'm going to do an interview with you until I saw what you did. And I appreciated your honesty and your fairness. And I, I realized, you know, you weren't trying to, uh, you know, manipulate it for a preconceived idea or to push a narrative or to try to hurt. So with all the people in life and Josh's life who hurt him, I just, I just don't trust anybody. Um, yeah. So uh, with that, then let's pivot over to Josh. What was Josh like as a kid? So <laughs> one of the things with Josh, um, when Josh was not even two years old, we knew there was definitely something, you know, uh, different about him. Um, and so it, we, you know, started having him checked, um, by the time he was four, five years old, I, I realized I, I didn't have the parenting skills to help him. I mean, he was take everything you think, you know, about parenting and you just throw it right out the window. <laughs> um, at the time I, I was a volunteer coach for special Olympics. So I was very used to working with, um, you know, development, developmentally challenged, uh, kids, you know, both physically and mentally. And I also coached for a long time. So, I, I mean, I really had a lot of skills in terms of working with kids, but nothing worked with Josh. Every time, every single parenting trick I tried, just nothing. I mean, nothing. And, and I realized that I need some. So I actually went back to school and got a degree. degree in psychology and started working with adjudicated youth. Um, and I, 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 went, I was pursuing the degree to help myself so that I could help him because um, I, I needed a better understanding of, of, you know, what I was dealing with and how to help him. Because he had, by the time he was six, he'd been just, he'd been labeled probably six different disorders. And six. Yeah, I know. Six, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so that's why you're saying <laughs> I knew it. So anyways, I worked with adjudicated youth for uh, probably about 10 years. Um, and it started out, you know, like I did an internship at a boy's prison. I mean, I'm working with kids anywhere from stealing a pack of cigarettes to literally murder. Um, and I worked uh, after that, I worked as an aftercare case manager, uh, helping kids who like gone through a, a program. And then when they come back home, they're trying to reestablish back into their communities. And then I also worked in um, uh, like group home environments for adjudicated youth, which were pretty intense. Um, so I've, I've, I've worked a, across the full spectrum of, of people who, you know, have struggled with disorders and that, and, and I'm glad I did because it really helped me, you know, with Josh and because Josh is without a doubt, the most difficult human being <laughs> ever met in my life. Um, just, uh, you know, a couple of the things that he was diagnosed with. Um, one of them is a, I can't remember the name of it now. This is so long ago, but, um, it's, a uh, um, positional defiance disorder yes thank you that is exactly what it was um yeah and uh it was brutal i'm mean, just brutal and
and you try every tactic and he'll just flip it on you and you try this and he flips it on you. Um, so it's very, very, very challenging. Um, yeah, this is where my good. hair went. Um, I, I used to have a lot of hair and, uh, that's where it all went. Um, so I was muted, but I think we're past it now. I was just asking, I'm saying, I was saying, correct me if I'm wrong, but oppos oppositional defiance disorder is where the person feels like anxiety when a person of authority is telling them to do something or talks to them a certain way, whether it's a parent, a teacher, a police officer, just anybody of authority, right? Or is it where the person tells you do this and you do the complete opposite? I'm, I'm genuinely curious. We, especially to the training that I got through my career and what I was doing, um, things got a lot better um, okay. in terms of, you know, we figured out, you know, different ways to help Josh Hello. and help him function normally and, and help him um, and help me and help, you know, the rest of our family help him. And we had a pretty good system going for years uh, when he was, and then when he turned 18 uh, and, and you'll, you spend time with Josh, you'll appreciate this. Uh, he's like, all right, I'm 18. You know, we're out having dinner. And it says, so what's it like to be an adult? He goes, that's right. I'm an adult. That means I don't have to do what you tell me anymore. I'm like what? And he goes, yeah, I'm an adult. Hey, so I don't have to do anything you tell me. And I'm like, well, technically, you know, you're living in my house and you're going to follow my rules. Um, when you move out, you can do whatever you want. When you're living in my house, you're going to live by our rules. And he goes, you don't know. You can't make me. I'm an adult. And in Josh's mind, as you know, it's kind of very black and white. Okay. Brandy. And there, there isn't a lot of gray and boom he quit everything. So in his mind, especially at that age, he took everything that we had ever made him do that he didn't like and refused to do it. He refused to take a shower, refused to brush his teeth, refused to clean his room. He started smoking. He didn't smoke before that. He's like, I'm going to start smoking. So why would you do that? Well, because I'm 18, you can't stop me. Yeah, but, but why would you start that? Because I can. And so he started smoking. Well, we're not allowed to smoke in my house. So he's always smoking in the house and I, I'm not going to clean my room anymore. Oh my God. I'm not going to do the chores anymore. I re and not only that, you can't make me take meds anymore. It does. You can't make me see a counselor anymore. And so in his mind, it just literally, he was done with every single thing that we had ever made him do that he didn't like. And, and then unable to let that go. Um, so the next two years were just absolute hell uh, for all of us. Um, I'm trying to parent, we're all, you know, and he's, and he's so defiant and, mm -hmm trying to do his own thing and be an adult. And finally it got to the point. It's like, dude, you know, if you, if you don't want to live, you know, if, if you're not going to follow our rules, you, you need to find your own place. Uh, so guys got a job and moved out on his own and he's been on his own ever since. I'm actually really proud of him for that. He worked hard Aww. and saved money, got his first and last month's rent, got an apartment. Um, but still really struggling because society has rules too. <laughs> and his landlord had rules too. And, you know, and he's still just defying all these rules. And to this day, he won't brush his teeth. And I tell him 40 times a week, um, you know, and he's just not going to do it. Um, and then it, it, it's, it's, it, and it can be very frustrating. So then me, of course, being, I think, you know, a typical parent, you know, I'm going to, I'm trying to parent him always. And in his mind, I'm an asshole who's always lecturing him and trying to change who he is. And I think this is kind of a normal team dynamic with their parents too, especially same sex parent. You know, my dad wants me to be like him and I'm not, so I'm not good enough for him, you know, type of an, a mentality. And then I think it's very normal, but he, uh, you know, with Josh, everything's always to the extreme. It's always to the extreme. And so then every time I was with him, I'm of course parenting. And he's of course saying enough, man, you know, <laughs> enough. I don't, so it's kind of like people are pushing Josh into the arms of now, right? Because I could see your comments in the chat. So the more everybody's telling him, leave now, she's not good for you, the more amazing she seems. Well, you get out. Uh, I, and so he started blocking me from his life. And he blocked me on social media. Oh, he no. blocked my phone number. Um, if I wanted to talk to him, I had to do like everybody else and go to his apartment and climb down and bang on his window. Um, if we have important family things going on or a death in the family or we're going somewhere, I'd have to literally trap through the alley and bang on his window and hope that he was home. And, and, and I finally realized, and this was, this was hard at first, it's, it's gotten easier, but I finally realized, you know, if I'm going to be in his life, I'm going to have to do a couple different things. One, I've got to, I've got to stop trying to change him. Not, you know, cause obviously as a dad, I don't want my kid, I want my kid brushing his teeth. 
I want my kid taking a shower. I want my kid keeping his room clean. You know, I, I, I want my kid having a job and I want my kid um, taking care of himself physically and mentally. Yeah. Of course I want all that. Yeah. But in his eyes, every time I even remind him, I'm, I'm lecturing, I'm trying to change him. And I was very much against the goth thing as he knows, and I very much thought, and, and you know, and this is, I think a common thing too, that was a theme in his life is I always think it's a phase. Okay, so here's a phase, and 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 you know uh, we go through phases as we grow. So I'm like, oh, I can't wait when he grows out of this phase. Oh, please God, you know when he grows out of this phase, and I finally have to accept the fact he isn't in a phase. This is who he is. Yeah. And I got to make a decision. I'm going to be in his life, or I'm not. And if I'm going to be in his life, I have to accept who he is, and I've got to love him anyway. I don't know. I don't know. Or I'm not going to be there. I don't know anything about this guy, but that part was important. Like. He acknowledges he needs to quit trying to change him. So there you go. About what, 24, 25? I'm like, all right. All right, dad. You know, you got to quit being a dad 24 hour seven and just accept the fact that. And, and then for me, it wasn't just that too. Then it's like, I have to choose to be proud of who he is. It isn't just, all right, fine. I accept you. even though I don't like it because that's, that's not going to work either. So it's like, no, I need to be proud of who he is. And I, and so I started focusing on that and I started focusing on the things about him that are great. And, and, and I'm very proud of who he is. And I'm very proud of, uh, obviously I'm not proud of all of his behaviors. I'm not proud of all the choices he makes, but I am very proud of him. Good. And uh, as a person and, and I stopped trying to change him. I just accepted this is my boy. This is who he is. I'm, nobody's going to change him. He's been this way since he was two years old <laughs> and, and that's who he is. So embrace it. And then since then, it was slow at first, um, but, you know, he started letting me back in his life and we started to build a better relationship and a stronger relationship. And, but a lot of that is, is me keeping my mouth shut, um, it, which isn't always easy. Uh, Do you know what Clint thinks about now? Like, has he said anything about her or has Josh said anything about what his dad thinks about her? And when I do it my mouth, I, I get yelled at. Um, and with Josh, too, as a parent, the, the, the surest way for me to get him to do something is tell him not to. And still, to this day, even though he's in his 30s, the surest way for me to get him to not do something is to tell him to do it. He's it's, <laughs> it's still in that defiant mode. Um, and so I do the best I can to try to find a balance so that we can have a relationship. I can still be there and take care of him if he needs help. Um, but there's a line. And if I cross the line, I'm blocked. Uh mm. He has and it's tough. I'm not going to lie. And you guys are, you know, I mean, obviously you're, you're family members, but you're, 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 uh, you know, you're happy together. And the thing that people don't realize, and, and I don't, they don't need to realize it's none of their damn business. My God, Brandy, it's so true. What you just said is so true. I was just talking to somebody about that. Like, I didn't realize the things like, why my parents did the things they did. Like I never understood as a child until I became a parent and then everything made sense to me. And then I learned that my mother has always been right my whole life. And I should have listened to her a long time ago. Because <laughs> Josh and I talk on the phone several times a week. We hang out whenever, and I, I'm very, I, I run a couple of businesses. I'm also a full-time teacher. So I'm very busy. Um, but when I've, we, we hang out probably, well, at least, once a week, well, at least like run to the post office or, you know, run to the store, go buy Wandwood, um, you know, things like that. And then when we can, um, so, and I got into woodworking a few years ago, just kind of making some little sculptures and stuff. I'm really horrible at it, um, <laughs> but I enjoy it. You know? So it's like, yeah, I just, I enjoy the process because I, I don't know. I think guys like to play with their wood or something. But <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> They're wankers. So... Um, and whoever got Josh the lathe, I, I am forever indebted to them and want to thank them because I had talked to Josh about getting a lathe for years. And the number one rule of Josh what? is if it's my idea, it ain't going to happen. Oh, period. Period. I tried to get him to a, do a food channel for years. Ever since he was little, the food concoctions and the drink concoctions. Oh my God. 
And I'm like, dude, the, the shit you put together and put in your mouth <laughs> is just horrifying. Uh, yeah. And people would pay to watch that, man. And I'm forever I tried to get him to do that when he first started his channel. I'm like, you know what you need to do with the channel? You need to do your concoctions, man. Oh, I'm cool, dude. I'm good, dad. I don't need that, dad. I well, do my concoctions on my channel, though. You do now. <laughs> I'm on my channel. I've been trying to get you to since you were combos. 18. Oh, my God. And the, and the stuff. Food hack and and I mean, it's just like. No, I don't know. A beautiful regret. I go back and forth. We're only 14 minutes in. But, like, he'll say something. And I'm like, oh, he really does care. That's a good dad. You acknowledge you can't change him. And then he'll say something to kind of embarrass him. I don't know. I can't make up my mind. Like. I don't know. It's, it's hard not to watch as gross as it can be. It's like, oh, he's not going to eat that. And when I watched your documentary, I'm sitting here going, don't eat that chicken, man. Don't <laughs> eat that chicken. I, I couldn't believe you ate that chicken. I'm like, ah. Hey, the Doritos chicken was delicious. Oh mm -hmm. you, know, you can't be. I would have tried it. Yeah, you got to be. I'm in his home. I got to have manners. Sure. Life. I appreciate that. I want to. I had way too much sauce to it. I've, I've, had, I've, had, I've had enough Josh concoctions in my life. <laughs> <laughs> to know what that can do to you um <laughs> but he's uh but that just is who he is you know and then and he's always been that way and literally what you see aside from the the substance abuse what you see is josh and this is one of the reasons i think he's loved and hated um is because nobody else got the balls to be that way who else? Nobody. We we are all a persona and we present ourselves in certain situations and certain things how we want to be seen. That's just human nature. Now, Josh, man, he's just 100 percent himself all the time. And he does have he does get a little bit of this, you know, the Cobes persona when he's online, you know, and I see that come out. I saw that in your interview as well. Um, but for the most part, you know, it, but that's also, you know, his persona. That's that's his YouTube channel. Um, he's not always like that um, in 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 RAL, you know, but the lathe anyways, I tried to talk to him to get in a lathe forever. And he's like, any, he, any, he, you know, and, and he'd go back and forth. Oh, that's cool. Let's try it. Okay. Let's go get one. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm changing my mind. I changed my mind. You know, a week later, Hey, you want to try a lathe? I think you'd make some great laws on a lathe. No, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Maybe that'd be cool. Okay. Great. Let's get one. Hey, Tom. No, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. <laughs> and we were like this for years and that's that lathe showed up and I'm like, okay, good. So I went over and um, to show him how to use it. And I hadn't used a lathe since junior high school, high school. And I just loved it. It was just so relaxing. And for the first time, mm -hmm. the I swear to God, the first time in his entire life, he let me teach him something. And he let me teach him how to use that lathe. And he let me show him how to make wants. And he actually listened instead of fighting me. Wow. It was magic for me. I, I teared up. I was just, I can't believe this is happening. Oh my God. Well, the idea that I can't grow as a person. <laughs> You know how 20 retard stuck in his ways. 20 some years. He would never let me teach him anything or show him anything. And he finally let me show him and he was, and we made and all Gary said he doesn't watch and keeps online Josh Primary as his world and own thing, but supports him doing it. Okay, got it. So relaxing. We had so much fun. Uh so I, I bought a lathe for my woodworking area as mm -hmm. well. And so then and we'll load his lathe up and bring it over here. And and you know, when I when I have the time, we'll spend a full day. Sometimes like eight, nine hours, just I work on my wood stuff while he makes wands and, and we work them together. And uh, it's, it's so great. And, and so whoever got in that lathe. I still haven't looked up the burrito. I am so scared to watch bugs come out of it. Uh, it just it gave us an opportunity to bond over something without fighting. And I'm truly thankful for that person. So whoever that was, if I see this, thank you so much. Hey, um, it was just a huge a huge thing in Josh's life and he enjoys it and he's very relaxing. You know, I, I find it very therapeutic for him as well. well um, it's, it's really therapeutic for me. Like when I play guitar and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. We're working on getting some resin molds and stuff now uh, to build our own stuff. So we can start, uh, we're going to try turning some resin to see how that works. What do you think is different um, when you compare Josh uh, now to when he was younger, when you guys were in that butting heads phase? really the only different well josh has mellowed a lot um with his temper which is i'm very thankful for because he's tempered used to get him in a lot of trouble hot tempered areas what can i say <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so um, and that makes it so much easier too because even now even when i do start lecturing him because i can't help it you know I'm, <laughs> I'm still a dad um he doesn't get so volatile you know he used to just instantly just 
just a wall and anger um and then just a huge blow up and now it's he's calmer Ellie said a lot of people blame one or the other about the relationship they both have made mistakes I'm sure these two are Josh and now if it's these two I I'm sure like no no relationship is perfect and like any relationship you have to work at like even you know if you're a son and dad you have to work at it maybe it's just two people doing their best and maybe they just don't get each other but who knows? I guess we'll find out. I, I don't know uh, enough. I'm still learning. <laughs> um, he doesn't react away. And, and, and it takes him, you know, quite often, 10 minutes later, he'll call me and go, hey, I'm sorry. I know you love me. You know, I know you're just trying to take care of me. I'm, and I'm sorry I acted that way. And so the, that ability to self-reflect a little bit and realize that, hey, you know, that was a bad, I made a bad choice and own it. Um is is a huge difference and it's so nice and and just the biggest thing that was me finally just accepting the fact that this is my kid and i'm not gonna i, I gotta stop trying to turn him into something i want him to be and let him be him Fact. and love him for it and respect him for it anyway Fact. and so that 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 was the biggest change and, and that but it took him a while to trust me on that too you know because but the thing is it's like um, and this is Josh, you know, Josh is the way his mind works, but I mean, I'm just, I wasn't, I wasn't a mean, horrible parent who just bah, all the time, but in Josh's mind, any rule, oh, brush your teeth, you know, when you get in the morning, you, you take a shower, you brush your teeth, you put on clean clothes, you, you make your bed. Yeah. That's a rule. <laughs> and then Josh's mind, I was remembering your clip. I saw a couple of his older videos and he said, I'm so pissed about that right now. And, and those were literally fights about like, you need to brush your teeth. I mean, it was literally, that's what those fights were. It was so silly. Um, and I've seen big improvements in Josh. Like now he showers every day. Um, well, I don't shower every day, but I shower more. But if he's going out, <laughs> you know, if he's going to leave the apartment for any reason. He's correct. I don't shower every day, but I shower more. Make sure he showers first. Um, takes, uh, and he started doing his laundry. Um, oh my God. Cause he would never do laundry either. And when he first moved out, I would, I would go clean his place. Cause I was just, I'm a clean fanatic anyway. And it was so gross. He's an freak. <laughs> and so, and, and plus, you know, it's like, is I, I got to teach him, you know? So I go, come on, man, let's go, let's clean this place. And then of course, so then he wouldn't let me in his house. <laughs> because I kept trying to again, control him. And also he didn't want to live like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it took a while. And after he got kicked out of that last apartment for it, that was a huge eye opener for him. Um, and as you mentioned, his new apartment's covered in dust because he's wood turning all the time. Um, but other than, but he keeps it clean. You know, he vacuums regularly. He's, he cleans the kitchen. He empties the trash. You know, it doesn't smell in there at all. Thank God. Um, you know, you're not afraid to sit down because you're going to stick to something. Oh, gosh. The old apartment's not pretty gross. <laughs> the old apartment wasn't that bad. You love roasting your son. You love roasting your son. <laughs> in your opinion. That's because the lighting was horrible. <laughs> And I think you're talking a lot about, you know, Josh growing and, and becoming more self-reflective, but I think it's also respectable that you, you know, you have felt that same growth and learned oh, hold to, on. you know, both better your relationship. It's, it's, this is pretty inspiring. I'm going to be honest. So it's, it's just parenting, you know? Yeah. And the people on the outside, you know, they don't, it's, it's easy to, and, and one thing, when, when you have a challenge, when you have a, uh, when you raise a child with challenges, you're, you're judged every second of every day. You know, when I was coaching Special Olympics, that was one thing I noticed all the parents had in common. Okay, I'm back. Uh, was the the way people look at them, the way they treat them, because your kid's weird, your kid's different. So what did you do wrong? Hmm. Um, you must be a bad parent because your kid's acting weird. And so it's very easy to blame parents, you know, and to this day, and I'm guilty of it, you know, if I'm in a store and I see a kid throwing a fit, I think somebody needs to swat that kid's ass. I don't think that's the problem with today's youth. You know, I'd spank them. <laughs> I don't. Think, I don't think. Oh my God, that kid probably has autism, and is and is having a moment right now because of sensory overload, because that's usually what's happening. I think that kid needs discipline, and 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 I'm guilty of it myself. So you know, and and but my whole life, you know, his whole life, everywhere you go, you're judging. And, and I don't. I think these, a lot of these major trolls. I think that they think they can hurt me in some way by calling me names, but. It's like, dude, I've been bullying my entire life. What, what the fuck else are they going to say to me? Well, I mean, oh my God, it can't. It's uh, it's surreal. Mm -hmm. The whole topic is surreal. And oh, and the other thing we started talking about things got way off track. Sorry. Um, you were mentioning um, uh, you know, people don't see us together. Well, that's because 
Hi, Illy. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I'm not as bad as everybody makes it seem like. Both. I don't bite. Only sometimes. Me and also as Josh's wishes, it's his thing. And there was a while when, when he was doing Facebook live stuff, I'd always log in to watch him and chat with him. But I noticed all the people in the chat would see me and start instantly messaging me and trying to talk to me. And I'd say, no, I don't want to take away from, from his thing. This is his thing, not mine. Um, so I didn't want to, you know, be that, you know, uh, the, a distraction. Um, and so I just decided that I need to never, ever be visible in his YouTube life because of that. Because it's his thing, not mine. Um, and I didn't know that that was going to be a harmful thing to us <laughs> because of the community that watches him. Yeah, this is and this is where I get so frustrated because they 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 don't look at him as a human being. They look at him as a, their toy. Aww. And I mean, the, 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 the I even some teasing and, and you mentioned this in your documentary as well, you know, some of the good nature teasing. And this was hard for Josh because I'm a teaser. And um and he has Asperger's and Asperger's take everything very literal. Yeah. And it took, <laughs> I won't tell you some of this shit that I put this poor kid through when he was little because I, you know, dad stories, you know, you were an alien, you know, I convinced him he was an alien. Oh no. And, and, and oh, he used no. my Photoshop skills to literally make it real. <laughs> no. And he was so traumatized. I thought it was so damn funny, but he was so traumatized. Even now, look at the look on his face. He's like, really? You're going to bring that up? <laughs> because it affected him and it's probably still not funny. <laughs> Oh my you know, it was, and 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 then later, you know, when I found out, you know, that he had Asperger's and that he took everything very little, oh, I was no. like, oh shit, I'm a horrible parent, man. You know, I'm like, I can't believe I did that to this kid. Um, so he had the wrong dad to have Asperger's. Um, and so he's always been teased, he's always been harassed because he's different, you know. Um, Rejected by every chick oh my god, every day is his life. From the time he was in grade school, I've had to, and you know, I have no idea how hard this is as a parent. Mm -hmm. to watch your kid go through this every single day. I mean, every day, it's not even a little bit. And it gets so bad that you've got to go to the school to intervene. Um, and, and he's just like a target. He has this giant neon sign that says pick on me above his head. And I don't know why, but even then there's a line and these, these trolls on the internet go far beyond picking on him. They do everything they can to make, to hurt him. Aww. Okay, he can't mention a single person's name on his YouTube channel without them going after them to the point where they get Josh out of their lives because they're like, I'm sorry, Josh, I love you, you've always been a good person to me, but I can't. And they're throwing him out of his life. Everybody, they will not allow him to be I don't happy. I know what you guys are doing to me with these documentaries, but like, I seriously, I have to say this again, I started off not giving a fuck about King Cobra. Like, do you know how long, like, Aaron used to watch him. And Aaron would send me clips and I just could never get into it. I didn't understand. But like the more I'm watching, the more my little heart is just bursting with Josh. I feel so bad for him. Even here, though, like I'm sure his dad's a good person, but like he just loves to kind of embarrass him. I noticed he's he's not allowed. They get him kicked out of every place he goes to. He goes to a restaurant and shows up and they find out he's there. They start bombarding that restaurant nonstop until the restaurant asks him to leave. A lot of these people I know and they're friends of mine, and they call me and they're like, I'm so sorry. But we just silly. can't. But they, they they want they try to get him, they get him fired from every job he gets, they get him kicked out of every establishment he likes to go to. It's insane. And so he can't go out of his apartment without being hazed and harassed. He can't go into any local establishment without them harassing that establishment until they kicked him out. Every person he mentions on his YouTube channel, they 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 do all they can to get them out of his life. They try like hell to get him evicted from his apartment. It does, does he, is his life not challenging enough? And then they, and then they, and then they go, oh, the decline. We're so worried about the decline. Josh is drinking decline. Gee, I wonder why the fuck he drinks. Because I enjoy it. I do. I enjoy it. It makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. Temporarily. But we won't have that conversation. But it's. And then the, and the, and the, you know, it's came up in your interview too. It's been so sad to watch the decline. Well, I wonder why he has a decline. Jesus Christ. Anybody, anybody that they're doing psychological projects with plants where they take the exact same plant and, and, and the same pot, same lighting, same everything. But one of it, one of them, they scream at all day and it literally stunts his development. A plant. Let's let's take a human being, a human being. I, I don't. Um, oh. They've crossed a lot of lines, to be honest. I don't get it, man. I just how miserable does your life have to be? 
that the only fulfillment you get out of it is spending five, six hours a day harassing an autistic man. So yeah. I think, you know, I kind of want to pose that same question. Do you, do you, do you understand that there's the, you know, that there's like, there's a, a group of people that do genuinely care about Josh that may mess with him, you know, yes. may, may do small things. And then there's the other group of people that. So there's, there's three groups, my fans who don't mess with me. And then the other two, like you said. Yeah. So yeah, there's the, the fans who just are nice. Um, and then he does have, there is a group. You are Tori. And I know some of them, not personally, um, but I know I can list online names of some of the people who, are genuinely, I think, good natured teasing, um, not meaning to harm, not meaning to harm, uh, not and not realizing that he does take. And this is this is something we work on constantly, is separating those. You know, some of the mail things, some of the shit they send in the mail, getting him to understand. Hey, that's really kind of funny. <laughs> you know, um, no snow, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and getting him to recognize the difference between you know the stuff that is funny and not. But then there's and and, and they yeah, are- now I just don't care about. I don't think Nal's misunderstood. I think she's just a biatch and a horrible person. Like there's a part of me who wants to protect Josh now, and there's a part of me actually, and the whole ass side of me who doesn't give an f of what happens to Nal. To be honest, they are, and even though they intend to be harmless, and I get it. Um, 10 years, man, you know, when, when you're under that constant bombardment of it, it's, it has a psychological effect on you. Um, but then you've got that group, the ones that I just got so pissed off about, sorry about that. Um, that treat him like a toy. They own him. He's our toy and we get to do whatever yeah, we want with him. Me. I own no, me. I mean, that's what they think. Okay. They, and they, they don't, they don't, this isn't a human being. This is their own reality TV show that they get to manipulate and control. And anybody that's nice to him in this reality TV show is instantly attacked. And another reason I've never done an interview like this, because it doesn't matter what I say. And they, when you share this, they're going to take everything I say and twist it, and they're going to turn it, and they're going to turn me into a villain because they need a villain. And I'm their villain. There isn't, a, there isn't one of those people that could handle 10 minutes in his life. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Let alone 10 years. They, they, I, I made that one post on Facebook the one day about this, talking about how they, they treat him like they're, he's their own reality TV show and they're producers. Okay. And I called them out for a bunch of their shit. They lost their collective shit on the subreddit. I mean, just lost their shit about, oh, fuck. And they were so pissed off and so hurt and upset over one insult. One. Mm-hmm. How about one every 10 minutes, every 24 hours for 10 years? One insult. They couldn't last 10 minutes in his life. They're too, they're too sensitive. They're too fragile. So, and this is one of the things that I have the highest level of respect for Josh. The, I mean, he has substance abuse issues and we talk about mm-hmm. it a lot and he knows how I feel about it. And I'm not going to get into that on camera Good. for his sake, but fuck. <laughs> but I think if that's all he's got right now, based on the abuse he's taken, and and it isn't just a little man. If 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 these trolls were his parents in his life, he'd have been removed from the home a long time ago. You know what I mean? I mean it's surreal. Like the worst I do anymore is smoke pot and drink alcohol. His dad looks at oh what? you know did you see that look? Oh what? So anywho, oh. um I haven't touched dirt dust during several days. I'm quite proud of myself. Days? Several weeks actually. Um, and that's the other thing. Potato said, Hey, right now, that's the only part I agree with from Clint. I don't want Joshie's life. I couldn't imagine living with Asperger's, but I have severe ADHD, OCD, BPD, and those aren't easy. Well, it's got to be a struggle. Like, oftentimes we think our life is bad, right? But like, it sounds like he's got an internal struggle a lot he has to deal with. Um, it's got to be hard. It's got to be really hard. Especially when you have a parent who likes to pick on you too. What do you but think what he does? Yeah, they send it to him. Yeah, it's yeah, that, that that guy. <clears throat> I think I think a lot of people would agree that that guy that that sent Duster in the mail is like a genuine piece of shit. I'm still doing it. I intercepted. Oh wow. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. I give, it to a, I give it to a friend of mine who has a computer business because uh, he's in his business all the time. 
Well, yeah, all the shit they send in the dusters going. <laughs> find places for it. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of my friends and family thank you. That's shitty. I'm sorry. Like I, I get trolling. Like I fucking have trolls. But like to send somebody duster in the mail is fucked up. You guys for the free shit, <laughs> the free cat food, the free bird food. I got a buddy who's got bird feeders. And he love that bird seed. So anybody that wants to send him that shit, keep sending it. I got friends and family who love it. <laughs> you got friends who need some like wood chips. Yeah. Yeah, because I got three big old boxes of it. The troll sends. Sweet. Is that what they were sending you I, yesterday? Wood chips. Yeah, that one. That, those are wood chips. Yeah, they sent me like three of them now. Yeah, oh, that's just it. You know, and when I and I have to obviously tell people in my life about this because um, I do a lot of charity work and I do a lot of um, 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 I do a lot of things in the public in my community, mm -hmm. and and I have to warn them. I'm like, if you put any of this online, it's going to get attacked. Um, and you're going to hear some really nasty shit about me. So just be prepared for it. Uh, and then when I. Yeah. So Sandra, they were talking about how somebody sent uh, Josh Duster in the mail. And from what it sounds like, his dad said they still do, or they did at least. And he had to intercept it, which is really dangerous and really, really messed up, like beyond messed up. Tell them the situation. Everybody has the same response. They sit there with their mouth wide open and then they go, why? And, and I think that's kind of the bottom question is why? And, and, and I mean this sincerely, as pissed off as I got a little bit ago, I sincerely hurt for these people. I feel bad for them because I can't imagine, and I tell Josh this all the time, how hard their life has got to be. I think it's funny. Fuck them. I know. But when, they're, when your life is so bad, Mm -hmm. that that you have to attack like this nonstop to make somebody else's life worse than yours so that you can feel better about yourself and especially a mentally challenged person. Um, wow, man, that's a, I feel bad for them because they have got to really be hurting inside somewhere. Um, there's got to be some disconnect somewhere that's, that really causes them a lot of pain and suffering. And I really sincerely feel bad for them. I, I would, nothing I can do about it. I did finally track down one of the uh, one of the really nasty trolls who trolls me all the time. Oh. I finally tracked him down a couple days ago, and uh, seriously thought about sharing his phone number and his address and his name and his family's phone numbers and addresses wow. and names. He's in Massachusetts, and I thought about sharing it all with everybody so that he could all the true fans of Josh could just bombard the shit out of him and his family and see how long they last. Um. But obviously, like I said, he's hurting enough, you know. It's guys. Yeah, no, don't stoop to their level, man. They dox me all the time. Well, not only that, but like I said, this this guy to do what he does to us and say the things he says to us, and and the nonsense. He'll call me five, six times a day. I, I never answer the phone, Damn. and he'll finally leave a voicemail, which I don't listen to. I just delete him. Um, but it's like <laughs> he's obviously got a hard life, you know. He's obviously missing something there, so I don't want to. I don't want to make it worse. And I definitely don't want to put his family through that. Wow. Well, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't share the number with Josh. <laughs> what can the collective good people that that want to help Josh that aren't, you know, sending him alcohol, aren't sending him duster, stuff like that, not getting him swatted? Oh, not necessarily a bad thing. It's the duster that's the bad thing. It's, yeah. But uh, but these people, what can they do to help him? What do you what do you think would be the best yeah. assistance? Well, and the thing um blue it's really hard to press charges for harassment on anything online like youtube and the internet like i'll speak from experience it's like oddly protected and unless there's an immediate threat like somebody is on your doorstep with a knife or somebody saying i'm on my way to off you right now like it has to be an immediate threat if it's not they don't care they truly don't care. Thing is, you know, and I've seen a lot of very genuine people out there who do truly like Josh and care about him, and that always makes my heart really happy. Um, and I'm very appreciative of it. And so, on a side note, and I'll explain why, because I've dealt with this enough. <laughs> because they say certain threats are open to interpretation, so it has to be like an immediate threat. Josh. Uh, there's good people out there. And Josh, and that's the, the thing that people, the thing that I think makes it the hardest with the hard trolling is he is such a good person. Um, you met him. He is very genuine. He's very kind. 
I have never seen him walk into a building without stopping and holding the door for the person behind him ever. And he's kind of scary looking. So people are often like, oh, but he, and he just smiles. Um, animals, good God, animals just love him. Everywhere we go, he just, dogs just, I mean, just even mean dogs. They'll just write to Josh and calm down. Um, he's a very giving person. You know, the first time when he got his first apartment, this is so many years ago, but he kept getting in trouble because he kept letting homeless people sleep there. I don't know if you remember those videos or not. Um, and I, and I Wait, talked what? to him, like, man, you can't do this. He's like, but dad, these people are cold. You know, they got nowhere to go. What are they going to do? Sleep on the street? And he felt, and he, oh this gosh. is the type of person he is. He's a loving, caring, giving person who's just genuine and different. He's such a good guy. I know he's made mistakes. I know he's made mistakes. Are you guys trying to get me to like be a Josh fan because it's working? <laughs> and I know he's different and it's okay to be different, man. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just. But a, don't allow random people to sleep in your house. But that was really cute that he was worried about them. The, the contrast between that and these horrible people is, wow, it's just night and day. But the, the good people, I don't know. You know, I don't know what they do to help them. Um, the thing is, and Josh isn't going to like this, but Josh has got to help himself. Um, any type of change, if anybody has ever quit smoking, um, quit any habit, it's hard. And it takes a whole lot of willpower and it takes a whole lot of desire and work to change in any capacity. Um because personal change is hard. We are creatures of habit. And that's where a lot of these trolls are. This is their daily habit. They get up in the morning and troll Josh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got my laugh for the minute or whatever it is, but it's a habit. And if Josh is going to change, he's got to want to change. True. Because it's too much work. Um, nobody can do it for him. And it's the same thing with alcohol. Um, he's got to want to stop it. And I I think there's parts of them that want to have. Uh, I don't want to stop drinking alcohol, but I do want to cut down on it. And I've been making a solid effort on that. Yes, yeah. And that's where's that? And mm -hmm. that's what it takes. Is it's got to come from somewhere within. And I think the last year's holiday break, where he ended up in the jail, um, was a real eye opener for him. And then his friend, who struggles a lot with his health right now because of things like smoking and and alcohol. Yeah. Um, well, Walt doesn't drink. Right. But the smoking. Is yeah, he's a heavy smoker. You know, and he sees that and he's it's starting to become more real. Um so we'll look forward to when I get older. Uh -oh. And the thing with Josh is I smoke weed, so I'm not worried about the consequences of Well then I could tell you how old it's not it gonna change. He is best way it since this was two. posted three months ago. And as his own dad, I had to get to the point where it was accepted. I had to accept it. There, there's a one of his disorders, and this is very common with people who have eating disorders, um, is a, a self-loathing. And, you know, people are, with eating disorders are often very misjudged as being very vain. It's all about their figure, whatever. And that isn't the case. A lot of people with eating disorders, they literally don't like themselves. And the, and it's they, they feel the need to constantly, there's this voice in their head that is always reminding them how terrible they are, what a piece of shit they are, how they're not worth anything. And Josh struggles with that a lot. Mm. And not even the trolls aside, he struggles with that a lot as a human being because that voice is in his head and it has been his whole life. And, and it's so hard for him to accept praise. It's very hard oh, for him to gosh. accept good things. I've watched him over and over have something really good in his life happen that could be really great. And he will start to feel good. And mm, it's instant. Nope, nope, nope fuck you, fuck this. And he just will shut it down and he will eliminate the good thing uh, because he doesn't feel he's worthy of it. Um, even things like wands. If I just want to give Josh a hug. If every wand he'd ever snapped was sold <laughs> because he'll make this awesome freaking wand and you're like, oh my God, that is cool as shit. Yeah. No, it's not. Fuck this. It snaps it in half and throws it away. Mm. Um, and he does that with that's a great, then the wands are a metaphor to real. Matthew, email me just reason today at mail.com and I'll get you the link. Things in his life as well. Um, Big Ben, you know, Big Ben, he's in the people at Asperger's, as you probably know, so Josh, he focuses on things, the color yeah. black, the color green, 
uh, snakes, cobras, Big Ben, bell towers. Clock towers, yeah. Um, these are things bell, that have guns. Towers. These are things that he's been this way. This has been this way since he was two, three years old. Mm -hmm. When he was four, he could tell you everything about Big Ben. They don't change. Um, and in and, and very much need a routine and they need that routine to stay the same. You experienced it yourself. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. I will be praying for your daughter's friend. I am so sorry to hear that, but I do believe in the power of prayer of prayer. And um, I will be praying tonight and please keep me updated. Laughing out loud at you. Sorry. When you were waiting outside of his apartment. <laughs> Welcome to my world, man. Josh, I'm going to be there at nine. I show, I call him at eight. I'm being there at nine. Okay. I show up at eight 30. You ready? Yep. No, I'm just getting in the shower. When are you just get in the shower? It'll be quick. I, I, oh, really, I call really? him at eight 45. I call him at nine at nine 10. I'm knocking on his door. He won't let me in his apartment when I'm like this because he knows he's going to get a lecture. So he won't, I'm getting out of the shower at the tower after I'm away. He won't um, open the door. And I'm like, dude, we got to go. Stop rushing me. And, and the more I rush him, the slower he goes. And literally 11 is when he'll finally come out and we leave. <laughs> And I just said his said his parking lot. <laughs> you know, it's it's uh but he's he's that way, but he has this routine. And if that routine is not followed, every single part of that routine, he can't leave the house. And if you try to hurry him, then he he rushes and then he it just doesn't function then and then I can't think, I can't think, and things are wrong, my routine's off. Um, this doesn't feel right, that's not right. Um, and so, and also with the autism being in busy places, being in noisy places. So traveling, uh, causes a ton of anxiety. Um, but I really want to take him to see big Ben and it's been on our list for years and he's so back and forth one day. It's like, yeah, let's go. And then, okay, let's do it. And then, you know, I'll start to book it. And he's like, no, forget it, forget it, forget it, forget it. I ain't going. And part of that comes from the anxiety that comes with the change in the routine. Yeah. And then another part of that is just, he doesn't think he deserves it. I don't deserve that. I'm not good enough for that. Fuck that. I don't like it. I don't want it. I don't need it. And then convinces himself that he doesn't want it. And he does this with... I've seen Big Ben a hundred times on YouTube. I've seen the inside of it. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't change anything seeing it in real life. But it would. No, it wouldn't. And then next time... We'll go see Big Ben, Cobes. You deserve it. We'll, we'll make plans to go again. <laughs> and... Oh, and no, no. But this is so in terms of that was a really, really long winded explanation to try to answer your question. Um, but so he has anxiety, too. It makes sense because like anxiety can talk you out of like, I don't know, like I even get that sometimes where like something really good is going on. But then you get like anxious for no reason. And it could talk you out of like a really exciting moment happening in your life. Or you could be really looking forward to something. And all of a sudden that anxiety takes over. And like, what if it doesn't work out? It's really sad. Like it can control your whole life. <sighs> I want to hug him. There's really nothing they can do to help him. I think the biggest thing they can do to help is somehow try to stop the troll trolls. Um, the, the people who literally won't let him have a life who constantly, and thank God for his landlord. Oh man, what a great guy. Uh, oh, my landlord. Awesome. He, he is actually, awesome. He's actually a fan of my videos. And he watches Josh's videos. He tells me all the time, Clint, don't worry. They're in a thing they're going to fucking say that's going to make me, we know. So didn't, does his landlord kind of look out for him in a way? I know um, before Josh was saying like the landlord has been like really patient and really worked with him. So it's kind of shitty now, like ruined that situation for him. We know the situation. We know who they are. We know what goes on. I watch his videos. He's good. All his neighbors love him. Um, because he's so nice, and all the neighbors like, I want to go visit him. The neighbors are like, hi, Josh. Um, they're always talking to him. They love to hang out with him. Um, it's because their dogs love me. I go outside to have a cigarette, and the dog just comes outside. The dogs just, dogs just gotta see it. And take, judge, you know, when they went to the uh, metro to file the report about Puff, um, dog there named Rocket. Dogs and they were just, <laughs> you know, um. But anyways, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, you know. So Gary said they did, but now was the hair to break the camel's back. That's shitty. Just supporting him in terms of, you know, let him know, hey, you're okay, man. And you got a lot of people who really believe in you. And, and, and I believe in him. I think um, you, you had mentioned the, uh, the Christmas Eve event. Um, would, you, would you mind uh, talking about what happened there? Uh, not really. Um, 
Josh just was Josh has a really hard time with holidays too. Cause you know, he doesn't have enough shit to deal with. He also has severe holiday seasonal depression. Mm. Um, and as we all know, Josh drinks to cope. Um, uh, he drinks to, he self-medicates with alcohol. Yeah. Um, and he's, I, it was one of those things I've been waiting in his parking lot for two and a half hours because we were trying to leave town. Uh, when he finally came out, he was just so drunk. Uh, and then I called him out on it in the vehicle and I called him out on it. And then he started getting really pissed off. Uh, he got sick. Um, and then after he got sick, he just started being very belligerent and very angry because I was lecturing him about it. And, and, and I wasn't even using a lecturing tone. I was just trying to talk to him. Um, and unbeknownst to me, he had another pint of Jack in his pocket and he gets it out and starts chugging it. And we get to a mini mart and we're getting gas and he gets out and he's in the parking lot, just screaming at the top of his lungs and drinking and slamming this and walking around the parking lot doing, you know, how he rants, you know, he's doing one of his rants in the middle of the parking lot with a bottle of booze in his hands and call the cops. Damn. <laughs> he's disturbing the peace and public intoxication. And the cops are like, what do you want me to do with them? I said, take him to jail, man. <laughs> I'm serious. Um, yeah. You know, he's, you got to be held responsible for that. I mean, and yeah. What he was doing is not okay and it's not acceptable. And but on a side note, I don't know why people try to like, it never works when you try to like talk sense into a drunk, a drunk person or tell them they need to stop or blah, blah, blah. Like it never works in your favor. Like you have to wait to have the conversation when they're sober. <laughs> you have to wait. I'm not excusing his actions at all because he probably deserved to be you know, spend a night in jail, but like, just on a side note, it like never works or works in the person's favor for trying to have like a conversation when somebody's drunk like that. He needs to be held responsible for it. So the cops like, you sure you don't want to help him? I said, no, you take him to the tank. You know, I'm not going to take him home and babysit him. He needs, you know, somebody called the cops on him. You need to take care of, him. you know, it's, he needs to be held responsible for his actions. Um, True, and I'm glad it happened to be honest with you, because it was a, it was a wake up call for him. Uh, he certainly still struggles, obviously, um, with the dependency, but he's he he, he is aware. Okay. It didn't make him aware because he didn't remember any of it, and he didn't. And he's like, "I did what? I did what?" Things he was saying. Oh my god! It was the stuff that was coming out of his mouth was just so vile. And yeah. so much anger and, and it just wouldn't stop and he just would not stop and he could not redirect him. He just would not redirect. And so, and when I told him about his, what he did, he felt really horrible. Mm. And uh, and he said, okay. And that's when he agreed to start getting counseling. And does he still go? That's been, he's been going to counseling. Uh, we haven't gone for like a month now. Uh, Cause I, this is, I'm in my busy season right now. Um, and I'm just, I'm just normal ride for stuff. So um, where I'm in busy season, I haven't been able to, uh, I'm, I'm I'm just can't until the end of the end the end of this month is when I get. Okay, I understand you're busy, but that's really annoying to take a month off therapy when your son really really needs it and you're his ride. Back to a normal schedule, uh, but for my particular business, October to Christmas is just it's twenty hours a day. It's it's just insane. You know, people criticize you a lot for not taking care of Josh enough or not being there enough. Um, what level do you think you're actually responsible for Josh as a human being? Uh, well, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> legally, none. He's an adult. He's lived on his own for 12 years. You know what I mean? Um, what am I supposed to do? Ground him? Uh, take away his phone, what's spank this, him. What's this about legally? Um, so in terms of what I am able to do, nothing. <laughs> you know, there's this huge movement to Clint needs to put him in a home. I don't have that capability. I don't have the right. I can't, he's not a child. I can't just say. You guys, um, can you help me with this so cheryl said breezy question hun does his father know about now and how truly toxic unhinged and dangerous she is to josh so from what i gather and i can be completely wrong he's met her right 
I don't know. I don't know if he's tuned into her and if he's seen that and he, I mean, I guess I was going to, and he doesn't try to stop it. But again, if he tries to stop it, it's just going to push Josh right into the arms of now. I don't know if he's seen everything, but I can imagine meeting her for the first time as a parent, you would get a bunch of red flags, bad vibes. You're not good for my child. <laughs> I can imagine he would think that. No, we have all tried. They met, but doesn't know shit about her. Ay, ay, ay. So, no. So, they've met, but he doesn't know how bad she is. His dad knows about her, but he can't do anything about it. Josh is an adult, and if he tries to stop it, Josh will attach more. That part right there. He picked her up from the airport, so he probably got a general idea of how she is. I don't know, but like we're saying, and like I'm learning about him, if you tell him not to do it, right, that just like makes him run even further to her. Um, let's just hope he wakes up or finds a better option. I A miracle? I, I'll be praying for that tonight. <laughs> I'll go put him in a home. And I have friends who still work in the, I, I told you, I worked in the field for 10 years. And I have friends who still work in the field. And I talk to them about that stuff. And I say, and then you do, man. It's literally nothing you can do. Um, and not only that, but I wouldn't want to put him in a hole because I know it would kill him. Yeah. Um, at the same time, in terms of what level do I re feel responsible for him? I'm his dad. I love him. And I care about him. If and you do, then please make sure you don't go a month without getting him to therapy again. And so I am, when he needs me, I'm there. Always. And I get criticized for that too. There's no win. <laughs> There's no win. These, like I said, these people want a villain, and there is no win. And whenever you have a unique person like Josh, too, everybody wants to know why. What's wrong with them? How did they get that way? Well, it must be his parents, you know. And, and that's a common response. It's because I'm unique. Those mirrors mean they're Cheryl. Wrong. Exactly. I've got Cheryl. Welcome to the Breezy Bunch. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you have a fun time here, and we have some member stickers. I hope you use them. Welcome, welcome. I've gotten tons of text messages of people pretending to be saying this is your father, Clint. You're grounded for making videos and drinking, boy. Been a good one. <laughs> oh my God. So you know, um, but in terms of being responsible for him, he's my kid. I'm always going to be responsible for him. Um, but as I said, he's an adult that lives on his own. And if I want to be in his life, there's a line that I can't cross. Yeah. Or I get banned from his life. So I, I, I play on the edge of that line all the time, but I can't cross it. And, and I shouldn't cross it. Um, he's an adult and he's, and to be honest with you, um, with the level of mental illness, illnesses that he has most people at that level are homeless or they're in homes and does Josh take good care of himself no but does he survive on his own yes and for that I'm proud of him. especially with the level of harassment he gets imagine and I can't help it, especially imagine what his life would be if he wasn't trolled so hard. How much stronger, because um, I can't imagine any human being going through that. Cheryl, I knew you were, but I just, <laughs> I welcome you just in case, but welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Nonstop abuse, 24 hours a day. Name any human being that could live through that and be okay. Yeah. None. None. And the, except one. Okay. And no, he's not okay, but he's so much more okay than anybody else would be in that situation. You know, um, <clears throat> I think uh, I think you you brought up an interesting point. Uh, you know, wondering, imagining what what Josh would be like if uh, if he didn't have to get trolled all the time. And you know, I, I want to ask you: uh, Are there sometimes where you wish that Josh didn't do YouTube? or that he didn't ever start doing YouTube? Yeah, so that's another really tough question. Um, selfishly, yeah, I wish he never would have started because of what I see him go through every day. But the, the good parts of it, this is what he does. It's his thing. It gives him joy. Um, he has some very, very toxic daily habits and relationships because of it that, that are very frustrating. But it's still, it's what gives him joy. It's what makes him happy. It's what he does. It's his thing. 
And it's probably like an outlet, right? Because he's alone a lot. So maybe it's like he has other people to talk to. Maybe some of them are trolls, but I don't know. Courtney's a buddy troll. I love Courtney. I don't know that much about her. From what I've seen, I like her. Sorry if you guys don't, but well, I'm sure you guys do, but <laughs> I meant for anybody out there. From what I've seen about Courtney, I think she's hot and I like her. Not like that. And you know I've seen mean? it. And Josh has always been seriously funny. He's just always been funny. You know, there's there's like jokes. There's jokes, and there's dad jokes, and then and there's, there's Josh, Josh jokes. jokes. <laughs> And, and and he's always had Josh jokes his whole life. Even when he was a little kid, he had Josh jokes all the time. You know, and he used to come to work with me all day because um, I was coaching. So he'd come hang out in the gym all day. Um, I was a single parent of Josh for several years. And, and we just hang out all the time. It was, we'd get up every morning and have breakfast and watch uh, Disney cartoons. And then we'd, and this is why, by the way, his obsession with pipes, smoking pipes that come from uh, 100, 101 Dalmatians. Oh, really? Roger, yeah. Uh, the shotgun, where's that obsession come from? Uh, Tombstone. Tombstone and also Fox and the Hound. Yeah. Aww. A lot of his Big Ben, that fascination started He's with. He's winning me over here. He's winning me over even more. Um, 101 Dalmatians as well. Um, so a lot of his obsessions today literally came from Disney movies that we used to That's watch. So cute. And then we'd hang out all day together and we'd go to work and he'd hang out in the gym with all the kids. I mean, everybody loved Josh and, and Josh entertained him and tell jokes. Even at the age of three, he was telling silly jokes. He used oh, to get man. the bubblegum paper, you know, and the people would buy him joke books because for Christmas, because they know he loved to tell jokes. And then his concoctions, his food and drink concoctions. Good Lord, the stuff that I've seen that kid put in his mouth. Um, <laughs> and the thing is, you know, and he always loves it. And everybody else is like, oh, don't, don't, don't. And he's like, mm, oh, this, he's having food gasms all over the place. And everybody's like, oh my God, he's digesting that, you know? And, uh, I got a Josh joke. It's really bad. What do a funeral director and a mortician use to keep the fire warm during the holidays? A eulogy log. There's jokes and there's dad jokes and there's Josh jokes. <laughs> um. So anyways, you know, so that's, but this is what he gives him joy. And that's another thing that, another one that. It is cute. The, the people accuse him of constantly e-begging. Uh, how is it e-begging when I just sit there and people give me money? I don't so, even ask for it. And there I was like, you must be proud of yourself. You did e-begging all the time. And I'm like, uh, well, he entertains you 24 hours a day. He should be paid for it. Yeah, how much money do you guys make on merch off of him? Hold on. I think this is important. Brandy said, obviously, when Josh came home on his birthday and Jessica told him to told him off and he called her a bitch, it was almost over. So he will stand up for himself. And Gary said, I was so proud of him there. Potato said, someone asked if they were on a different stream. And I thought, thank God I'm not the only one. <laughs> Me too. Gary was actually praying it was over. Don't lose hope, you guys. I'm telling you, I think he just needs someone better to come around. A better option. You know, my idea is uh, how much money my, does he of my business. How much money does he get from those, those merch sales that go on constantly? No troll t-shirts that trolls make fun of me and steal my life. No, there have been I don't get jack from those sales. The guy that made his logo for his one business, um, he used to always, I don't know if he still does, but he would send like gift cards to like Home Depot and stuff like that to help Josh out oh, um with cool. proceeds that he made from selling merch. And I thought that was really cool. That is um, uh he'd send him materials and or gift cards and things like that. Uh because and not that, but he was so kind, you know, to make that logo for Josh. And it's such a kick-ass logo. Oh, oh I love my scary. logo. <laughs> I get his, I'm looking at his sticker. I've got his stickers all over there. Um, so he, it's, uh, you know, and so that he was a really cool guy. And there's, a, there's you know, there's a lot of those guys out there. Thanks, Cheryl. So I think, you know, that, that leads into the next question that I had naturally, which is, do you think collectively that YouTube has been a bad or a good influence on Josh? Like, do those, do those goods in your mind outweigh the bads? They used to, um, because there's a lot more of it. Um, but the, 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 the really nasty trolls have been getting stronger and bigger. Uh, uh, you know, and they get their, I don't know what it is. You know, they get their five minutes of fame out of it or what that they get their dopamine rush every day from going to the subreddit, I guess, and posting something totally vile and getting a lot of likes on it. Um, so, ah, oh, that's a good question. That's hard. Um, I don't, it used to, I don't think it does anymore. 
Um, Aaron, um, are you available? I'm texting you right now. It's important. Well, it's not that important, but the substance abuse. And of course, they'll blame me for it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know how we work that one out either. Um, but, and at the same time, I get it. If I had to live a day in his shoes, I'd be drinking all day too. I really would. I could not be him. I get trolled a tenth as much as he does. And, and I just, but, and I don't even read them. I mean, that's the other thing. So, I don't know, but you're kind of annoying me. And it took 55 minutes. You have to stop making excuses and saying, oh, if you had his life, you'd drink too, because the drinking is going to kill him. So, and you need to stop skipping therapy. I know you're a busy man with your charities and yada, 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 but there has to be a way to get him to therapy. Like there has to be a way. And we have to stop saying, oh, if you had his life, you'd drink too, because like, it's all excuses. Like he has had a hard life. I'm sure dealing with trolls is really, really hard. Um, but we can't keep making excuses. So enough of that, please. Thank you. So I'm not even taking the mental abuse. I'm just annoyed as fuck. You know, he's got that mental abuse to go with the annoyance nonstop all day long. How do you not? How do you come out of that okay in any shape? And so for that, no. I wish those people would go away. You know what I mean? And they won't. They, 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 they thrive off of this. Um, that's where the word trolls come from. They're slimy, stinky, small-brained little people who live under a bridge and torment good people. They are in their mama's basement. It's what a troll is, you know, and so no, I don't, the good that's come out of it, you know, like when we were on over Thanksgiving, um, you know, we went and visited my family and, you know, we always do for Thanksgiving, go visit family. And he, uh, everywhere we went, people would see him and go, Hey, can I get a selfie? Can I get a selfie with you? Um, you know, some real fans that he ran into, it was really cool. Um, and made him feel really good. And, you know, he's a rock star, you know, we're in the Denver airport and people are taking selfies with Josh. Aww. Um, and I, I haven't gone on tour yet, so I can call myself a rock star. <laughs> so when I see that stuff, I'm always like, oh, man, that's awesome. You know, and I appreciate those people. When I see people like the guy that made his logo, you know. Um, Hold on. Brandy said, Marty said he went to troll Josh and ended up respecting him. So he left him alone. See, and do you see why I love Marty now? Do you see why he is the love of my life? <laughs> <laughs> um, troll shaming you can't pawn it off all on the trolls though real life still exists it's just it's so much like I understand his dad's probably had a lot to deal with and whatever but like I just hear a lot of excuses and I'm really trying to keep an open mind with his dad here and I was doing okay until 55 minutes in and then I was really tired of hearing about I drink too oh you have to drink to deal with this like Somehow a lot of us deal with trolls and we don't drink or dust or do anything. Um, and as a parent, stop making excuses. <laughs> That's all. Oh, it helped if I press play. Um, reaching out. And when I see people um, sending him little gift packages of his favorite jerkies and stuff like that, you know, I mean, that's just very thoughtful. You know, the, the people go, oh, you know, I, I, Josh loves his jerky, so I'm going to send him some. I mean, that's just really cool. You know, the, the people are thoughtful like that. And so when I see those things, yeah, I'm always, I'm, and I just know how much he loves it. You know, it's just, you know, he always tells me when he's doing a new food hack, I always get a text message or a phone call to tell me about it. And, and, and so it's always, you know, it gives him great joy to do the stuff he's doing. Mm -hmm. um, but I also see the hurt and I see the nonstop hurt and I see the nonstop alcohol abuse because of the hurt and, and I get, yeah, and then I, no, I don't. It's not abuse if it's in your <laughs> You know, you know, talk talking about a lot of this stuff. What what do you think is, what do you think is one thing that people that watch him don't know about him? Uh, That's what, man. I don't. I think the one thing they don't know, I think the one thing none of them realize, the good people in in or the trolls, is how close his family is to him. Um, I think when they see his lifestyle, they assume that his family's abandoned him and that he's on his own. Um, but like I said, we're in contact sometimes every day, a minimum of three times a week. And whenever we have any type of family things, he's always involved. Uh, his uh, sister takes care of him, you know, helps him out when she can. Um, the, everybody loves him and everybody's there for him always. His family is very, very supportive of him. 
and they're very involved in his life, even though we don't, you, we, none of us, we all choose not to be in his online life. Because again, that's his thing. We don't want to invade on that. That's his thing. And we don't want to take away from that. We want him to be able to have that on his own without interference. And the only reason I'm finally doing this interview is just because it's just gotten so out of hand. Um, some of the theories and some of the, the, the behaviors, in my opinion, are getting dangerous. Because mm-hmm. trolls don't have a family like us. Um, because I've had, I've had death threats on my kids, on my daughters. Yikes. I've had people threaten to kill my, my daughters because I'm such a piece of shit parent and nobody gives a shit about Josh. So they're going to kill our entire family to teach us a lesson. So what the fuck? <laughs> we, we are a very loving family and we're very close. Um, so to hear talk like that, and one of these days, the shit that they keep making up and spewing all over the subreddit, there's going to be some crazy person that de- decides they need to take action. That's how- That's my fear. Eventually, some crazy ass person is going to think that the shit that they're hearing is real and decide they need to take action. And, and we're going to end up on some late night drama television show, you know, where they're going to be watching this to find out how Clint died. It's surreal, man. <laughs> because when does it end? And you know, I mean, where you think people would be watching to find out how Clint died? We wouldn't be checking to see if Josh is okay. Where does this go? There is nowhere good for it to go in terms of the, the really intense trolling and the crazy stories that keep coming out. There's nowhere good for those to go. And after this, you're not going to see me in Josh's YouTube channels. Okay, that's Josh's thing. And I'm and it needs to be his thing. And I will stay out of it. But I just like I said, it's in my opinion, it's getting dangerous. Um, and so I felt it was finally time to say something. <laughs> and like I said, those guys are going to twist it all anyway. So it really doesn't matter what I say. Josh and I could, Josh especially could win the lottery and literally cure cancer with it. And then the trolls would attack him for it and everybody who took the cancer treatment. I think some people think that you are Josh's guardian, that you have like some sort of legal control. over. Okay, so he doesn't. It, no. That's, that's so not the case. When it's common, um, when... And this came up to us. Uh, this is, in my opinion, <laughs> a mistake and also not a mistake that I made with Josh. Um, when they're minors and they're about to become adults, um, typically, if you've got um, um, a minor with disabilities of any kind, uh, you go through a paperwork process where you become their guardian and have custody of them even as an adult. And so that is a common thing. And we sat down with Josh and the whole family um, when that, you know, time kind of came up when he was 17 Mm -hmm. and decided he already had such issues of control. And especially with the, the idea that we control him yeah, and constantly tell him how to live his life, you know, brush your teeth, um, things like that. So we decided collectively that I was really, really hoping. I am. So we get that he doesn't brush his teeth. Like, you don't have to keep driving that point home. We got it. Like, I knew it watching it. There was no, like, I I noticed it. Do you, like, oh, okay. I'm trying really hard. Open mind. His dad's probably dealt with a lot. It's probably been really hard. Keep an open mind, Breezy. Keep an open mind. That if we didn't do that to him, it would be a sign to him that we respect him and trust him. And I was hoping that he would then rise up to that, if that makes sense. Um, where I really felt it would be very detrimental to him and our relationship, especially if I then produce paperwork to say, guess what? I'm, I'm your legal guardian for the rest of your life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and like I said, there are times when I wish I would have done that because that would have given me legal recourse to help him more or to, you know, if I wanted to put him in a home and like I said, I don't want to put him in a home. I, I, he would die in a home. It would be terrible for him. Um, at the same for the staff too. At the same time, I think it would be very beneficial to him some of the services that he would get from that, um, especially something like detox and some daily counseling. Um, that when there are certain meds that do help him quite a bit. Um, Cheryl, oh I'd my! Love God. to see him go back on those. Cheryl, you are the sweetest. Thank you so much for the super chat. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So there are some things, definitely some areas I think he would function better 
And you and made my night. You became a member again and a super chat. <laughs> Love you, Cheryl. We could have a more productive, what we call a normal life. If I would have retained his guardianship and forced him to do that stuff. Normality doesn't exist. But at the same time, I don't think I could force him to do Normality. Each definition, person's definition of normal is different. Therefore, normal does not exist. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's I think that's good to get that cleared up because I think that's a big misconception. Um, no, I don't. And like I said, and part of me thinks it was a mistake, um, and the other part of me is like, I'm glad I didn't because I, I his personality type, the the defiance disorder, would have magnified that times ten. Um, and I think he'd have gone off the deep end. Um, I really do in terms of anger and hostility and um, just his general behavior. What are your hopes for Josh's future? Um, what, what, do you, what do you envision? Well, what I would love to see Josh do <laughs> is I'd love to see him start a, regular, a, a YouTube channel that could be monetized mm -hmm. where there's no drugs, alcohol, and swearing on it and just do his food hacks. I got my monetization back. Well, good. I've even volunteered to buy his food for it. <laughs> oh. If you just make one meal a day and call it cooking with the Cobes, cooking with the Cobes, and it's one meal a day where you do some crazy food hack and have food gasms while you eat it on camera mm -hmm. sober. And I think a lot of people would watch that. I really do. And I think it could be a very successful venture for him in the YouTube world, uh, both financially and mentally. Um uh, for him. I think that would be great. Um, I would, I really want to see him continue with the counseling. Um, I hope the counseling gets to a place where he can address some of the issues that he really has dealt with all his life. Um, I think a lot of some of these issues come from um, abandonment issues. So do you get why it's so important not to skip a month of therapy then? Do you, like, I really hope while you're saying this, you're reminding yourself not to go 30 days without getting your son to a therapist? Um, I think is where some of the self-loathing comes from um, and not feeling worthy or deserving of anything good to happen. Mm -hmm. I think some of that comes from that, um, from his uh, biological mom. Um, Fuck her. And mm. in her defense, she wasn't mentally okay, I don't think, you know. Um, Gee, I wonder where I get it from. She wasn't a horrible person. <laughs> um, but after we divorced, she just kind of disappeared one day. Oh, um, no. and, and that had a serious effect on them. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to find her, and it's just like, dude, no, I didn't ask for that. They won't. Um, and, and not only that, but she doesn't deserve hate. Um, I understand where he feels that. Yeah, that's sad. But he, she certainly doesn't deserve hate from the online world. Um, you know what I mean? She was in a rough place in her own life, um, and she dealt with it the way that she knew how, and it's very sad and unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um but anyways, I'd love to see him get help with that. I'd definitely love to see him get help with the substance abuse. Yeah. I think the more he could get that under control, I think he'd be happier in general. And definitely, definitely, he's slowly killing himself. Um, and the thing is, it's just a slow way to kill yourself. And it is, it is. Drinking alcohol every day is like a very slow deletion off this earth. It's horrible. And like, I don't think he even realizes it's like when you're already depressed or you're anxious, alcohol, if you're already feeling those things, alcohol is like a depressant. So it makes you feel even worse. It's bringing you down, right? It's making you feel mentally even sick, like more sick than you already feel. When I bring that stuff up, I get reminded that I want to die anyway. Well, um, I don't want to die, but we're all going to die. So you might as well enjoy it. And then I would love to see and he needs, he needs to get his teeth taken care of. Um, and he finally did set a dentist appointment. Thank you. No, I, oh, I did, but then oh, I, no. because I lost Puff. I know, but he's at least moving that direction. Um, I don't know what can be done to be honest with you. Uh, when you don't brush your teeth for 22 years or for 12 years, <clears> we got it. Any help. Um, but there he's, Do you get that. We all get that. He doesn't brush his teeth. Like, my uncle that's passed away over in the cemetery. Like he even gets it. Like we all get it. Chachi sitting next to me. We all get it. We all get it. He's finally at least open to going to the dentist and getting it worked on and worked at. So hopefully I've that'll get fixed. So annoyed. Um his wand business, as you mentioned in your video too, he's sitting on a gold mine. Hey Buck. Um I want his wand business. 
because I would sit home all day and crank out four of those things and he'd make a full-time income. <laughs> if he cranked out four ones a day for what he sells them for, he'd make a very good income. And I keep trying to tell him, you know, you want to win the lottery to build that dream house, make four or five wands a day and save the money and you'll build your dream house. Um, um, for the money I need, this, we got to include like landscaping and like how many acres I want. How many, how many, followers, how many followers you got? 80,000. 80,000. 80. 81,000. 1,000 acres times. So that is, oh, wait, let me count the zeros. One, two, three, four, four. Ooh, four million dollars. If every one of your fans bought a wand, that's four million dollars. Um, I'll buy a wand. Like, I'm not even joking. Not even for a troll. Like, I'll buy a wand. I think he does need counseling. I think he needs counseling to learn how to overcome a lot of the, the self-abuse and definitely the alcohol abuse and substance abuse. Does he still make them? Um, yeah, he needs help. But as I mentioned very much earlier in this uh, interview, it's got to be self-help. You, you can't force help on people. In terms of does he need help in terms of how he lives other than the substance abuse and the teeth? No. Um, he's just, it's him. And I'm, and I'm cool with it, you know? He's... It's just who he is. He's, he's going to get up every day and make YouTube videos and rant and Carrie. cook some crazy ass food and eat it and yes, make some uh, crazy drink combinations and drink them and make wands and play his guitar. Matthew, that was you who emailed me, right? Like, while I see you, I just want to double check. He needs to get over the alcohol abuse for sure. Yeah, he needs probably detox at this point, like maybe like a week in there. Um I mean, longer would be great, but like, I don't see him wanting to stay somewhere longer than like three to seven days. Um, but that would be a good start. Like instead of taking him to jail that night, they should have taken him to detox. Now, granted, he could have left detox and went to drink, but like, at least they would have known they tried, you know? And look with them. And be the God, the King Cobra, you know, that's just who he is and i'm totally okay with those aspects like i said I, I love josh and i'm actually very very proud of who josh is there are some of his choices i'm definitely not okay with and definitely not proud of and he knows that and i'm on about it all the time um but i can't change him those are like i said self self-help comes from self-help it's called self-help for a reason and change isn't easy and, and that's the other thing you know i think we all know somebody in our lives who struggled with substance abuse and it's a very sad thing to watch them slowly demise into this canyon and they don't see it and they don't acknowledge it and they don't want to see it or acknowledge it and it's very hard as someone who loves a person in a position to watch it happen and feel so hopeless and you do what you can and you love them and that's that's it what I, you've talked about this a little bit but i think what what do you think is the best Thing about Josh. What is okay? I really want to hear this and be focused. So remember, he's going to say the best thing about Josh. But Brandy said because he has ODD, he won't do good in detox or treatment. He has a routine. You mess up that routine, and he will flip out. Plus, he can't handle being told what to do by people. Oh, uh, so what do you do though? What do you do when somebody needs detox or rehab and they have ODD? Like, what do you do? You can detox at home. They could give you medication for it. I've had to do that before. And then I also abused the shit out of that medication and didn't properly detox. Um, like, what do you do? What is his greatest quality? Uh, well, two. One is kindness. He is seriously just an incredibly compassionate person, uh, especially with animals and, 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 and older people. He's just so genuine with them and he's so caring about them and he's just so good with them. Oh yeah, I love my senior citizens. And and he always has. Um I get along better with senior citizens than I do with most people my own age. Yeah, without a doubt. And 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 is the fact that <laughs> shit that he goes through on a daily basis and he just is unapologetically himself all the time. Mm. That takes balls. It does. <laughs> That's, it does. That is serious respect because I can't do it. I couldn't be 100% myself all the time. Uh, I'd be too terrified of the, the judgment I would receive. It's the and, Aries in me. We Aries don't give a shit. And yeah. I think most people can relate to me a lot more than him. Is Josh an Aries? 
how funny it's true like when the Aries side comes out you give zero fucks you know i'm not gonna let the whole world see my vulnerable little underbelly you know and because i don't want to you know i'm afraid of the of being teased or harassed not josh man he just puts it all out there this is me take it or leave it I'm no gonna, i could kiss my asperger's i'm not gonna change for you i'm not gonna change for them uh this is who i am and i'm gonna stay that way and you know, when people in, in town sometimes approach me and ask, are you Josh's dad? I'm instantly on the defensive because I want to know if I want to kill him or not. Um, and then I'm like, oh, hell. and I'm like, do you know Josh or do you just watch his YouTube channel? And that's a little bit contradictory because, like I said, what you see on his YouTube channel is pretty much what you get because he's unapologetically him. But he also does have that persona. You know, he the way he is on his channel, he isn't that way 24 hours a day. There are times when he's, you know, much more chill. Um, you know, like when we play games and stuff like that, he's, you know, you're not seeing that persona. Um, when we're visiting the family. Uh, so when we're making wands, but. I think, I think for my last thing, you know, is there anything that you want to say that you want to get out there, set the record clear or, you know, just final words kind of thing? Well, you know, I've already said it all, but, you know, if you look at the summary, um, you know, the people that are good to Josh, thank you. Okay. I seriously appreciate that you care about him. Um, I seriously appreciate that you, in what level you can, try to help him and take care of him and support him. Um, to your severe trolls, I seriously feel bad for you. Um, I, I wish you could get some help. Um, because yeah, my trolls need help more than I do, to be honest. They do. Um, because they have got to be some seriously miserable people. Um to get joy out of harassing and trying to ruin another person's life, especially an autistic person's life. That's a special kind of weird. Um, oh, and yeah. And in terms of, uh, you know, you guys that feel the need to call me and text me all the time. Um, if you need to keep doing it for whatever reason, fine, but I, I don't read them. Um, I don't read your emails. I don't read your well, Facebook. Same messages. here. I was a text message saying you're trolled on the subreddit during this. And I'm like, I don't care. Unless they're threatening my life or someone I care about's life, I don't care. There's some interesting Zoom effects going on here. But I don't, you know, I mean, like I said, if they think they need to keep doing it to feel better about themselves, I guess, okay. But I don't read Because they think you're going to uh, ground me and put me in a goddamn group home. I don't listen. Or I, a fucking mental institution. I don't listen to, I used to, obviously, I'm human. I used to listen to all that the messages and read it all. But life. I quit doing it a couple of years ago because it was just too much. Um, and they don't have time and B it's just the same rhetoric over and over and over again. And, and they don't know what they're talking about. Mm. Um, and, and it's vile. So if, like I said, if for their information, I don't look at it or read it or listen to it. So if you think you're making a difference on, I don't think his beard and his beard and dragon like ran out the door, made it across the street and into the woods. Like if anything, he hid under a couch, under something. Um, or if he got out of the door to the apartment, I don't think he would have made it very far. Sadly, it's on me. You're not because I don't listen to your shit. He tells me shit all the time, but <laughs> other people will tell me. Well, shit. I do that so you can have a laugh with me at how stupid they are. I'm not doing it to make you feel bad. I know. Oh, I know. I know. I, I had a bearded dragon that liked to sleep in my shoe. I don't know. They like, <laughs> I would have searched everywhere. Like I would have turned his place upside down. Like in the places you think a bearded dragon wouldn't be, they could fit. Like if anything, it was probably looking for the dark and like somewhere to hide. And I don't know wherever he is. I hope, I hope poor Puff didn't suffer. And I hope he is flying high with my bearded dragons in heaven too. It's all good. <laughs> He brought him out to smoke I did want to include a short addendum here. Clint emailed me after the interview to clarify some things that he didn't get out. So this is directly from those emails. Oh, by the way, this didn't come up in the interview, but I know it's something people love to attack him about. Josh isn't on SSI. He hasn't been for many years. When he was on SSI, they did a full psych eval and deemed that he was permanently mentally disabled. He receives a small disability check from the government each month and it varies with his income. I do his taxes and all of his income is reported. One of my goals is to get him making enough money with his wands and YouTube so that the check gets smaller and smaller until it goes away. And another interesting fact that people don't get is his income. 
One of the reasons many people hate on him is because they think he makes a lot of money because he has a lot of followers. That's just not the case. With all of his ventures and the small disability checks, he makes less money a year than he did when working for Wendy's full time. And because his income is all from self-employment, he has to pay into taxes at the end of every year too, instead of getting a refund. Mm. Yeah. You guys, uh, you guys stay good. And, uh, yeah, yeah. for sure. All right. Thanks. Happy holidays. man. Yeah, happy yeah. Holidays. I like the guy who does the documentary style. I really like how he presents things. No, it's okay, Tori. I mean, I'm just speaking on my experience. I've owned, um, a few of them. So one of my last, or one of my tarantulas escaped once and I have cats. That was a fun day searching for, oh no. <laughs> I hear they're sweethearts. I hear tarantulas are sweethearts. Like, I just don't know if I could have one. But, like, I think they're beautiful. I really do. I just um, like them owned by other people. <laughs> I loved bearded dragons. I would, tell, like, I want another one one day. Um, but I also know, like, if you think about it, like, if you're a good owner, like, you need a large tank which I would always get like the largest because I wanted them to have plenty of room. There's lighting. You have to pay for, you know, you pay for a heat lamp, the UV light, changing out the bulbs all the time. There's obviously food involved. Um, and like right now, I just don't think it's a good time, but like, I loved owning them. Like I loved every bit of being a dragon owner. <laughs> like I love taking mine on walks. They had harnesses. My one even had a sombrero for Cinco de Mayo. I dressed him up. Like I, they're amazing. They're amazing pets, but like they do require a lot of care and you can't just like let one out and just forget about it for the day. You know, you can't just start drinking and forget that he's out there somewhere roaming. You just can't. Your brother-in-law cried. They're so sweet. Like the ones I owned at least love being hand fed, um, love sleeping on me. Like it was just, they're so sweet. They're so sweet. They're like little puppies. I had one that followed me. Like <laughs> I don't know. Blue mouth. I caught a wild El, pa El Paso desert tarantula, broken leg. I fed him bugs and killed with a fly swatter. Oh, he killed the bugs with a fly swatter and then set him free again to the desert. Crazy, but I was a kid. That's cool. You know, Cheryl, I can't judge people who like spiders because I owned lizards that people found were disgusting. Like, I remember I seriously unfriended somebody on Facebook that I had went to school with like my whole life. And I posted a picture of me kissing my lizard. And her comment to me, and it told me everything I needed to know about this person, was, ew, I would have thrown it down the garbage disposal. And I immediately unfriended, blocked, and I have never talked to that person again. I don't care. You don't say ew to my pet and what you would have. That's disgusting, you know? So, like, I can't judge people for owning spiders because people think I'm weird for loving dragons, you know? <laughs> um, I just don't know if I could own a tarantula. I think I would wake up at night and wonder, like, if it was out. Same for a snake. Um, like my baby daddy had so many snakes. He was a snake person. And um, I never felt comfortable at night because I had read too many stories. And he had big, he even had a tegu. Like he had big snakes. And like, I seriously would wonder if at 2 a.m. if I was going to look to the side and like there was a snake going halfway up my arm. You know? <laughs> but again, I love lizards and some people are like terrified of them. My dog constantly tries to kill lizards. I have to pry them out of his mouth. Tell him to leave my lizard friends alone. I still love your doggy, but tell him, please leave the lizards alone. How can, I know, how can you be so cruel to say that to somebody? And a lot of people for their pets, like, they're their babies. You know what I mean? When I get an animal, it's like having another kid. Um, they're like everything to me. Now I own two. Oh, I love leopard geckos. Four cats, one dog, 300 guppies, and my... You have an axolotl? Oh, you do? Potato and toothless. Oh, my gosh. I love axolotls. Like, if they were legal in California, I would have one of those cute little pink ones. They always look like they're smiling. Always. You have a chicken and they poop everywhere. <laughs> the one animal I would love to have, and I can't because it's illegal. I just hope that one day I can make friends with a turkey vulture so it's not my pet. <laughs> Do you all agree with me? I have no idea who that is, Brandon, but I'll take your word for it. Um, okay, so the Clint interview, my thoughts. Um, I don't know. I was okay with him until 55 minutes in, and then I had been done with his little comments. It's like 
he gets little jabs in. I guess that's what I noticed. Like, you know, he goes a few minutes with like, oh, and he's doing better and he's doing this, but he doesn't brush his teeth. Oh, but I'm so proud of him, but he doesn't brush his teeth. It was like, okay, we get it. Enough of that. Like we all know. Um, another thing is like, don't make excuses for the drinking. Like if I live this life, I would drink too. Or, you know, it, I, I can, I imagine, I can see why he drinks. Cause it's stop making excuses. Um, stop missing therapy. I, I don't know what to say, but like, I guess it's two people just trying their best in life. Right. And I guess they haven't figured it out yet. Um, sometimes parents go their whole lives without figuring out how, like who their child is or how to deal with them or help them, you know, until later on in life. For a long time, me and my mom didn't get each other at all. It took me becoming a mom. It took me going through addiction and everything else to realize like she truly was looking out for me my whole life. And I just, um, I guess I wasn't, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I guess my whole life, my family is like all a certain way. And then I'm like the hippie chick, right? I'm very different from my whole family. <laughs> very, very different. We all get along and I love them and we're alike in a lot of ways. But at the same time, we're very, very different. Like my views on the world are very different from theirs. Um, who they vote for, I would never in a million years. Um, but, and it was a whole lot of like for most of our life, like I didn't understand why my mom didn't get me. She didn't understand why I was this way. And at some point we just had to say like, you are this way and I'm this person. So like, what can we do to meet in the middle? And that's what works for us. And now we're like the best of friends. But um, I don't know. I didn't understand a lot of things that they were doing. I didn't understand why, like even as a kid, why I was being grounded all the time. I didn't understand why I couldn't hang out with certain people. I didn't understand why I had to live in a bubble and I had so many rules. I truly didn't. Um, I also thought as a kid that money grew on trees and I didn't understand why I couldn't have something every time I wanted it. <laughs> um, I wasn't like a brat, but I guess I was kind of like, I, I don't know. I, I didn't understand a lot of things until I had a child of my own. And I was like, this is why there were so many rules. This is why they didn't want me hanging out with certain people. This is why they were always so strict with me. Um, I don't know. It's weird how things change. But anyways, I'm saying this to say sometimes people go a long time without getting each other and always trying to change each other and fix each other. And then one day you just realize, like, stop trying to change the person and let's just meet in the middle somewhere. I don't know if any of that makes sense. but <laughs> You're the same with your dad. Yeah. I didn't understand my dad growing up, too. You know, my dad who stepped up, he's been in my life for as long as I could remember since, God, I was like, two. I think they finally got married when I was like four or six. Um, but he's the only dad I know. And I always thought he was so hard on me, right? Like I didn't understand it. I always thought they were so hard on me. And I always thought that I was living in my sister's shadow. Like she was the straight A student on a roll and all the like fancy little classes. And I was the person who ditched school every chance I could get. <laughs> I didn't want to be in school. I thought it was a waste of my time. Now I would do things differently. I really would. But um, anyways, I always felt like they wanted me to be her. And I think one day we realized, we all realized as a family, I'm not her. I'm my own person. And just because I'm not like, you know, a 4.0 student, I'm really good at other things. You know, I'm really good at taking care of animals. I'm really motherly and nurturing to people. Um, I don't know. I don't know if any of this is making sense. <laughs> no, money doesn't grow on trees. And I just had to have this conversation with my daughter the other day. And I told her the same thing. I said, I thought when I was a child that people just went out to their front yard and, oh, there was money growing. <laughs> like, <laughs> You know what I mean? I thought just because I wanted it, that somehow it had to happen. And I was telling my daughter, you know, there's people out there that would love to have a brand new iPhone. There's people out there who would want this. Some 11 year olds don't have what you have. And um, sometimes, you know, you have to realize that, you know, it takes working to make money and we just have to be patient. <laughs> you get it under percent. Sometimes like I know what I want to say in my head and it just doesn't come out of my mouth. So I just kind of hope you guys understand. Um, as an adult, I definitely understand my father more since he grew up. He, yeah. Yeah. I get my dad now. And you know what? As much as I thought maybe he was embarrassed of me or he didn't like me because I was in a certain way, it's not that at all. Like, he loved me my whole life. He just wanted me to make the right decisions. And um, many times in my addiction, it's weird how things work. Like, there's so many times, like, I should have been dead and not here. Like, 
the day I had my stroke and I had my seizure and like, I know your mama makes fun of this. Like I literally had to crawl home. Um, it was crazy. I didn't get alcohol in my system fast enough. And so anyways, I crawled home and I don't remember really anything other than that, other than waking up at ICU. But my dad said he just had this feeling about me and something kept saying, go check on Breezy, go check on Breezy. And he came in and I was choking on my own vomit and my lips were turning blue. And there were several other times. One time, um, I'll share my story. I don't care. I was doing really bad in life and I was at a hotel basically killing myself. With any substance I could find, I was doing it. Um, anything I could find. And I had locked myself away and I don't know how they found me really. But my dad busted down a hotel and saved my ass and got me to the ER. And with all the test results, like all the tests they ran on me and everything, like I wouldn't have been here if he didn't come that night. Like I was ODing. I was dying. I had put so much stuff into my system. Um, but yeah, he had a feeling and somehow, I don't know, he found me and it's just kind of, he's been like my angel in life. So we went a long time not getting each other, but like I said, I'm like the best of friends with my family now. He's always wanted me to do better. And sometimes I think parents get frustrated and I think, you know, when they put up with enough of our shit, they sometimes don't go about things the right way, but like, they've always been rooting for us and they've always been there. You see, he saved you when you were four. Oh my gosh, Marin. The dad's sixth sense kicks in. He had to save his baby. Yeah, yeah, you know. Um, anyways, I'm saying all this to say is maybe Josh and his dad don't get each other yet, but maybe something will click and maybe his dad will stop taking digs. And I think that would be really good because it's kind of like embarrassing too, like, right? <laughs> when your parents like constantly taking those jabs, I would be embarrassed if my family did that online. I would. I would have felt a certain way if somebody kept saying, oh, and she doesn't do this and she doesn't shave her legs. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. I'm trying to think of something embarrassing, but um, I don't know. I must feel shitty for Josh to have to hear that from his dad. I'm still here for a reason. I know it's to annoy all of YouTube and uh, <laughs> raise hell. I don't know. Josh isn't mentally mature yet. No, but maybe he can get there and I don't care, you know, and let's put his disabilities aside. Like he can still become the person he was meant to be. He could still do great things. He can still, you know, he can conquer the world. Um, then yes, but certain jobs I can't avoid. That was my stepdad. And I remember the day it's not easy being a parent. It's not, it's not. What's my discord potato. Um, DM me or email me, please. I'd prefer if you can reach out to me on like Facebook or Twitter because it's kind of like how I vet people and make sure that they're not a troll and just trying to get into Discord potato. I know you're not a troll, but um, <laughs> you know what? DM me on Twitter. Mom snapped and told him off. Really, Gary? It's also not easy being a kid. It's not. It's not. I remember being a kid in here. Oh, you don't have it that hard. But like truly kids go through a lot too, just because they don't have adult responsibilities. Like it's hard being a kid, especially in today's age. It is. I can't imagine being a child now. I can't. In the 80s, I had it pretty damn good growing up in the 80s and 90s. Like I had it really good, you know. Um, but I remember like there was bullies. There was things I was going through. Cheryl got in a lot of fist fights. You did, Jason? Josh knows Nell is dangerous. He's smarter than we think. I believe he's smart. I believe he is intelligent. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm really believing now. Like, I heard you guys say it before. The more you tell him something, like, he's going to do the opposite. So maybe everybody telling him to stay away is really, like, I'm telling you. I feel like he's going to end up marrying her if everybody's still like, stay away from her. I don't know. I just hope he wakes up. He deserves good things. He really does. I think he's a good guy. I think maybe he does stupid shit sometimes and maybe he's made some really dumb decisions. Um, but the fact that he wanted to like have people sleep in his house because he was worried they were going to be hungry and cold kind of tells me all I need to know. Like he's a good guy deep down. We were in Bakersfield and he made a crack without buying me a bra because I'm a girl and my blew up in the parking lot and it was embarrassing and glorious. Oh my gosh. I couldn't back out. Kids in my hood were pretty mean to each other. So I come home with a black eye or a bloody nose at least twice a month. Wow, Jason. People with Asperger's are incredibly smart. My nephew at five had already learned German and Russian thanks to YouTube kids. Wow, potato. It doesn't seem like he hurts anyone. I know there's a clip out there. I'm not going to get into it. Um, I don't know enough. I just know from that clip, but like, <sighs> 
if we put that aside, I think he's a good guy who maybe makes dumb, stupid decisions. I think that. I stand firm with that. That's why I'm so mean and tough. <laughs> you know, it, it's something, it doesn't even matter to be, I mean, I shouldn't say it doesn't matter. It's something I need to sit down and watch longer, but I don't think it's going to change my opinion on him. Um, I think he did something stupid and bragged about it and shouldn't have done that. Anyways, I put my father through a lot growing up. Thank God we closed before we got close before he passed away. I'm happy you did, Cheryl. Josh is misunderstood and shouldn't be on the internet, but he's not going to get off. So what do we do? You know, autistic people are very smart. Childhood can be great. Ignorance is bliss and all that. <laughs> Childhood can be great. It could also be hard. And I think that like more people need to acknowledge that kids don't necessarily just have it easy because they're not working a nine to five, you know, um, stuff goes on in school. Now kids have to worry about school shootings and everything else. It's not easy being a kid. Maybe adults have it a lot harder, but still like kids go through things. All the good and my bad made me who I am. And while it was rough to live through, I like me and that's all that matters. I like you too. I hope you know that. I hope not, Blue PJ said. No, 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 no. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. I don't even know where the clip is. It's something that I know I came across and I know it's out there. But again, I think, um, I just think he made stupid decisions. No, he didn't hurt an animal. No, 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 no. No. I'm still learning all these new characters. Matthew, true, but kids are a lot more vulnerable. Very true. Very true. No, if he hurt an animal, I would not be here rooting for him. I think he probably stupidly lost his bearded dragon, um, but I don't think he's hurt an animal. Yeah, no, I would not be here cheering and rooting for Josh if there was animal abuse at all. You saw my booty? Did you like it? <laughs> A lot of people are talking about it. It's made a lot of people mad. I don't know. I'm going to have to whip out fishnets more often. It was an accident. That's not something you want to dig to. Yeah, we're not going to get into it. We're not going to get into it. Just trust me. If I thought he was a bad person, if I thought anything like that, I would not be here saying, oh, Josh, I want to give you a hug. Okay, so can you trust me on that? Will you guys just trust me on that? If I thought he was a bad person, I would not be sitting here right now trying to get more about to get to know more about him. So I hope you take my word on that. Um, I'm just acknowledging that I know he's made mistakes and I know he's not a perfect person. So we're just going to look for towards the future and like what we can do to help Josh out because <laughs> I'm really rooting for him at this point. I didn't plan on it. I didn't plan on liking him. I'm probably still not going to search out his food content um, other than the cockroach burrito, because I'm genuinely curious about that. But um, I'm rooting for him as a person. I'm, I am. I'm becoming concerned about Jessica's parents being all of a sudden absent. I'm not. I think that they're just trying to stay away from her. And can you blame them? I think that they know enough about how she is and they know her routine and they're probably just hiding away until she passes out. And that's probably the only time they can enjoy their house. So, um, you sent me a Twitter. Okay, Lou, I'm going to be checking my socials and emails after this. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to hang out for a little bit. I know it's kind of like a shorter stream. We've been doing like four hour streams, but I will be live in the early morning. Well, let's say like 10, 11. If now is live, we can come live around that time and we'll hang out some more. Satan, can I have two biscuits? I want a biscuit. Jason said, I love Breezy in the chat. Not really down to see folks naked. Now scares me with her randomness. <laughs> it was only one bug in the burrito. Well, thank God for that. Like, do you know what I'm picturing in my mind? Okay, I'm going to gross you guys all out. I picture like a giant burrito. Like picture Alberto's. Okay, picture like an Alberto's burrito. I could really go for some Alberto's right now. I picture a giant ass burrito. And the second he takes a bite and it touches his lips. I'm picturing about 50 cockroaches just crawling out and scattering. That is what I picture. <laughs> now it was tripping day. That's what I heard. Sausage and gravy, please. I want gravy, but I don't want sausage in it. Actually, I just want a biscuit and jam. That sounds really good right now. Like a warm biscuit with strawberry jam. 
I'm not going to eat it, but I could definitely go for one. I sincerely want the best for Josh as well. I'm surprised that I'm rooting for him. I know, Cheryl. I didn't think we'd be here. I truly didn't care about him before, but like, I don't know, Jason and his wife have been sending me like documentaries and more stuff to look into. And I'm really grateful for that. A lot of you guys have been sending me clips and I'm really grateful for that too because I had no idea where to start. But it's really opened my eyes. It's really changed how I feel. Um, I don't know. I don't view him as like this disgusting person. Like I, I don't know how to describe it. Like not saying that I viewed, oh, I kind of did based on his food choices, but I look at him more like somebody who's just trying to get by and get through the day. And um, like I said, just totally misunderstood. Just misunderstood. Alberto's. Oh my gosh, I love Alberto's. I just like their cheese quesadillas. They're totally greasy. And I wouldn't recommend eating them every day. But every once in a while, every once in a while, tell me you do not crave a cheese, like a greasy, cheesy quesadilla. <laughs> it just, it's just good every once in a while. Fresh homemade biscuits warm from the oven. Yes, that sounds so good. It just sounds so good. I'm sick of my fruit cups and applesauce. I want to eat something greasy for a change just once. I've worked really hard. I want my greasy cheese quesadilla. <laughs> Sometimes it does. I don't know. I like food. Yeah, I used to like food a little too much during COVID, but uh, I, I I like healthy food now. I really do. But like, I don't know. I'm sick of eating grass. Like, I want a day to just eat something greasy. I do. <laughs> a good taco truck taco. I know. I could go for some shrimp tacos. I definitely want some chips and salsa. Ugh. All right, salad breezy. Go eat grass. Go get a fork and go eat grass. <laughs> Taco John's. Just be careful, Breezy. Now is possessive over him. I don't really want him. I, it's funny how many people on the internet, like I've got so many messages. You're just nasty for coming for Josh. Why can't you just let those two be happy? Honestly, everybody says that I'm in love with Marty. I'm in love with so-and-so. I'm in love with Josh. I'm in love with whoever. Um, I don't know, attach a random name. And so I'm just leaning into it for fun. I truly, that's just where we're at. We're leaning into it. We're having a good, a good time. Would I marry Marty? Probably. I think he's a saint. I think he's the greatest person on the planet. <laughs> um, but actually, I just really respect him as a creator. And I think he's a good person. I don't think he's big, bad, scary Marty. I think he takes care of the bad guys. So like, you could never say a bad thing about him to me. But um, anyways, I'm just leaning into it and having fun. Like I've spent so long on YouTube just like turning the other cheek and biting my tongue and I'm just having fun now. I'm just having fun. But deep down, honestly, do I want to suck Josh's face off? No, I do not. But I'm rooting for him and I'd be his friend if he ever said like, hey, I needed I want to quit drinking or I need help or whatever. Like I'd be a friend, but um, I'm not trying to steal him from now. <laughs> Sorry. You know, Marty is a good troll. Marty is hilarious. Marty, Marty, Marty. Cilantro, onion, and green salsa over double corn tortillas filled with steak. I was on board until the steak, but the rest of that sounds good. If you guys are ever in Southern California, I will tell you my favorite Mexican food place in the world. I've been going there since I was a little girl. And then they moved, and then I kind of got mad because I liked it when it was like a smaller hole in the wall. But it's this restaurant called La Tolteca. And I don't know what they put in their chips and like in their salsa, but it is so addictive <laughs> and it is so damn good. And I love their cheese enchiladas there. And it's like right up against the mountains. So you have like a nice little view. You can go for a walk. There's little shops and everything, but it's so damn good. I take the steak out and add shrimp. Shrimp on everything, please. I'd love for Marty to get Chantel's home toad LMAO. <laughs> He can't. He, you know, he got in trouble with that stuff. Well, not in trouble really, but like told he couldn't do that to foodie anymore. <laughs> um, so I, which sucks. I loved that. I loved. If you guys were around during that time, I was there for every single Marty stream. I took notes, and then I would come live and I'd report to everybody what happened. And like, I loved those times. I was having so much fun. I was so excited. 
it was nice to see Foodie get um, a dose of what she deserves. But, you know, or she's living her karma right now. She doesn't even really need to be trolled by anybody. She's miserable. Um, she's living in a fantasy, and her world's going to come crashing down. And unfortunately for her, I know she doesn't think food addiction is as bad as a drug or alcohol addiction, but food, just like anything else, you abuse it, it kills you. Um, addiction is very lonely, isolating. <laughs> it's one of the worst things you can go through, with, especially in that end part, either before, like right before you get sober, like you lose it all. Friends, family, your money, your job, your home, whatever you had, gone. And um, she's going to lose it all. She doesn't need anybody's help with it. She's going to do it all by herself, you know? Her health issues are shocking. Anybody else, if they were told they have 20 different health problems, right, you would change your life. She's diabetic and eats nothing but sugar, carbs, and horrible things for her. Grape soda, um, ice cream today, pizza. What else did she have, you guys? I, I forget. She ate so much today high blood pressure. Um, she has so many problems and she just keeps eating, just keeps eating. Oh, I love ceviche. Oh my God. It's fish and shrimp. I know Jason, that's one of my favorite meals. I love ceviche. I could eat that every day. Eric Green for inside. It's got to be weird to be addicted to something from birth. Like this has been lifelong for her. Most other addictions start later. I don't know this for a fact, but I kind of picture her as a kid, like, acting up or whatever, and people just gave her food. Like, I truly see that happening. So I think it became, like, her way of coping and everything else. I think it started very young with her family, not knowing, because she had a young mom, right? She talks about how her mom had her when she was a teenager. Wasn't her mom a kid herself, practically? Um, I think in a lot of ways, like, people didn't know how to deal with her. So here, give her what she wants to shut her up. And even when she shares stories about her childhood and stuff like that, you could tell people just gave her whatever she wanted to shut her up. So, I don't know. It is sad when you think about it. When, ev when every memory of hers is based around food, it becomes, yes, she even talks about childhood memories and it's all going to Pizza Hut with her mom. <laughs> like, going to this fast food place. It's not the rest of us, like, remember our first trip to, like, Disneyland with our parents or our first vacation with them or whatever, like, even if you didn't do those things, like I remember for me, like food wasn't a big thing. I've never like died over food. You know what I mean? Um, or like had food gasms or anything like that. But like, I guess a memory involving food for me is I loved going for picnics with my family at the park. Like that was my, one of my favorite things to do as a kid. We got to eat and we had like the best little sandwiches and snacks. And then me and my sister would go play and, like, my family would all just sit and watch. It was just a good time. Like, I just remember sunny days, butterflies flying around, and it was just, like, all was good in the world, right? Um, but that's, like, maybe one of the main things that involves food, right? Picnics. For foodie, it's like, I remember when I was six and we went to Pizza Hut. And then for my seventh birthday, we went to the buffet. And then when I was eight and I had the flu, three days later, they took me. Like, it's always about food. Always. Didn't she live with her grandma? She says that. Yeah. Does she know Salad's messaged you after posting those pics? She doesn't believe it, Sadie. Nobody does for some reason. But yeah, he's been woofing at me. <laughs> the only special food I remember is Rest Fest, a budget meal that always hits a bit different. We would just combine all the leftovers. That's cool. She recalls meals as a kid, like someone describing their first love. It's weird. It's so weird. So no foodie eye roll, oh, face ga food gasm. No. Even like, during COVID, when I gained a little bit of weight, it wasn't like, I wasn't really eating it for the food. Like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, have you ever been at a weird point in your life where I truly felt like bored? I felt bored. <laughs> and I didn't like going out because my roommate at the time was like, I don't know, like, I get COVID was scary. But like, he was one of those like, over the top, like spraying you before you even get to the doorstep. I don't know. It was crazy. Like the whole even process to get mail, I dreaded it. Like I dreaded getting mail. I dreaded even going out the front door because I knew I was going to get sprayed down with Lysol, like all this stuff. It just became like such a annoyance to leave the house. So like I ate, 
I ate and I had gained weight. And that's why like, I've been working so hard for a while now to just get those extra pounds off. I wasn't happy either. I wasn't happy when I was overweight. Like, I don't know. Everything. I was just miserable. <laughs> I was miserable during that whole time. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, have you ever been in a weird time and you don't necessarily like what you're doing, but it's just like there, I was bored. I was bored. Boredom makes me play guitar way cooler than a fork. <laughs> I worked during COVID and made bang for it. It was just a weird time. It was a weird time. And I feel like people freaking out made everything worse too. Like it just made a scary situation so much worse. I feel like the people surrounding it made the situation scarier than what people were saying on the news or whatever. Did you guys experience that too? We were on lockdown. I didn't notice. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like people overreacting and like panic buying everything off the shelves. And then like if you even coughed, like everybody looked at you like they were going to kill you. It was just a weird time. It was a weird time notice we were on lockdown didn't notice at least we can all laugh yeah like, <laughs> now we can now that we're past it but it was so crazy like I hope to never go back to that I really don't I need to lose a few pounds but I know during summer I will swimming yeah swimming is so good hiking just being outside yeah summer people tend to move more I just started early because I don't know like when I hit 40, something changed mentally for me. And I know I say this all the time, but like I just realized things could go either like really uphill or downhill for me. <laughs> and I decided that my 40s, like I fucked away most of my life drinking, partying, doing stupid shit. Like I just decided 40 was going to be like the years I really took care of myself. I really took care of my body. I treated it like the temple that it is. And I was going to just love myself. Um, and so I've just been moving more. I was so sick. I was always hiding behind sweatshirts, like always, always. I was so scared to show my body. And um, now I'm like proud of what I've accomplished. And it feels really good. I still have a long ways to go. Like I'm not going to be entering any like fitness contests or anything. I'm not going to be like a bodybuilder. But um, even just moving more, it did something for me mentally. It made me feel so much stronger people are so weird. They're hoarding toilet paper when the aliens attack. <laughs> but why do we need toilet paper if the aliens are attacking? Like, what are you panic buying for? Like, I think if the aliens wanted to take us out tomorrow, they could. And that toilet paper is not going to do a damn thing for us. So no need to panic buy. Do I still cover subliminal locks? I do not. But if she is hitting her child on stream again, I'd be happy to draw attention to her. I'd be happy to. Um, I'm 42. I look pretty good for 42. I have good genes. You are hot, Burberry. 40 is major. Yeah, you need the TV for all the probing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me just have a vision of my happy aliens. I don't think that they're going to come blow the world up. I think that they're going to meet me and be like, see, Earth isn't that bad. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Jason, um, this is amazing, girl. Everyone in the reaction community is jealous of you because you actually take care of your body and the results are showing beautifully. Thank you, Sadie. Thank you. I, I don't know. I just don't want to become a foodie beauty. Like, I don't want to be Chantal, you know? I want to use my legs for as long as I can. Um, I want to do fun things and not have, like, weight hold me back. I want to wear clothes that aren't sweatshirts all the time. I love sweatshirts. I love hoodies. I really do. But, like, I want to wear them because I want to wear them, not because I'm hiding something, you know? Hopefully that makes sense. I'm East Coast out. You know, I'm going to wrap it up, too. I didn't realize it was midnight. So I'm going to – well, I'm lying if I say I go to bed. I'm probably going to be up scrolling on my phone for about another hour or so, but – I'll see you guys in the morning, okay? I'll keep a lookout for any now or foodie beauty updates, and I'll probably be on, if they're live, if any of them go live, I could be on about 10 or 11. So I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Um, thank you to my amazing mods. Thank you to the Breezy Bunch members. Um, thank you to all the new faces that keep coming by. Like, I'm loving getting to know you guys. Thank you even for liking this stream or just hanging out with me. Have a great day, great evening, wherever you are, and I will see you guys in the morning. Bye, everybody.